<coughs> okay, good evening. I'd like to call to order this meeting of the San Lorenzo Valley uh, Water District Board of Directors for yeah. July 18th at 5.31 p.m. Will the secretary please call the roll? Okay. President Hill? Here. Director Foltz? Here. Director Smalley? Here. Director Larga is absent. Okay. We will be starting out with a closed session. Do we have any changes to the closed session agenda? Nothing that I'm aware of, President. Okay. Oral communications regarding items in closed session. This portion of the agenda is reserved for oral communications by the public on any subject that lies within the jurisdiction of the district and is not on the agenda. Any person may address the board of directors at this time. Normally presentations may not exceed three minutes in length. Individuals may only speak once. Please understand that the Brown Act limits what the board can do regarding issues not on the agenda. No action or discussion may occur on issues outside of those already listed on today's agenda. Any director may request that a matter raised during the oral communication be placed on a future agenda. Point of order. I think we need to modify that section because for the closed session, the oral uh, or the communications is about the item that's on the agenda. Yes, that's on the agenda. Yes. What you read there implies yeah, that there are things not. there are things yeah. not on the agenda yes. and that they could be put on the future and that sort of thing. We need to. That's about the third third or fourth time we've done this. We need okay. to fix that so we don't confuse the, the first, audience. The first time I did that, I and you commented, I um, thought I just read it wrong, but yeah. Good point. So this is just to be clear. This is for the item, the one item, the one item that on is closed on agenda. the closed session agenda. Yes, which is a liability claim. Yes, from a citizen. Um, seeing no oral communications, uh, we will now adjourn to closed session. Board members only, and we will reconvene at six thirty, I believe. Six thirty. Yeah. yeah. meeting of the San Lorenzo Valley Water District Board of Directors at 6.31 p.m. on J July 18th, 2024. And would the Secretary call the roll again? Yes. President Hill. Here. Director Foltz. Here. Director Smalley. Here. Director Largate. Here. All right. All are in attendance. Okay. Um, changes to the agenda. Um, change, changes to the or additions to the agenda, if any, may only be made in accordance with California Government Code Section 54954.2, the Ralph M. Brown Act, which includes but is not limited to additions for which the need to take action is declared to have arisen after the agenda was posted, as determined by a two thirds vote of the Board of Directors, or if less than two thirds of the members are present, a unanimous vote of those members present. Um, oh, um, I am going. President Hill, did you want to give a report out of closed session? Yes, I will give a, I should give a report out on closed session, yes. Uh, we did have a closed session and we provided uh, direction to staff on how to handle the matter that was uh, being discussed. Uh, and our legal counsel was involved in the uh, discussion. Um, okay, changes to the agenda. I'm going to drop Item 9B, the board officer nomination. Um, I think that we probably ought to wait until we appoint an additional board member and then uh, have a vote from that. So I'm gonna drop that particular item. If we uh, have a need to have, uh, uh, if I can't be here for a meeting to chair the meeting, uh, the remaining board members can pick someone to chair the meeting from one of themselves. Um, in addition, given that this is a special meeting and the notice on the agenda, but it's a full agenda as if it were a regular meeting, and the notice of this didn't come out um, the Friday before like we would normally do for a regular meeting, I'd like to move the following items to 
eight, um, the next regular meeting. <clears throat> and that would be um, 8C. And in addition to moving it to 8.1, I would like to have the strategic discussion about Bracken Bray that we have been requesting now at least three or four times. We need to have that discussion. Um, 9A, uh, 10A, 10B, 10C, 10D, 10F, Um, I will be pulling all those from the um, consent agenda anyway, and I have a, um, I, I just by glancing through them, I've got a bunch of questions about them. Um, and I, you know, given that we only had 48 hours to prepare here, I'm, I'm just a little, I'm a little tweaked about that. We need to be more respectful of board time and the community if we're going to bring an entire full agenda to a board meeting. Special meetings are intended to be one or two items. Very, very quick. Mm -hmm. Things that can't be dealt with at a future meeting. Special meetings are not intended to be full agenda items. We, uh, the, this district used to do this back in 2017 and 2018, and it was a huge uproar in the community, given the fact that we were not giving enough notice for full agendas, uh, just like we did this time. So, um, I'm not entirely sure what the protocol on this is, but I believe we need a motion. I move that we delete the following item. We move the following items to, uh, uh, and by the way, I mean, I'm up for discussion about whether anybody else wants to do it. If no one else wants to do it, there's no reason to have a- Okay, uh, so is there any Christina? other- Christina, I don't. Christina, is it by motion and then a majority vote? Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So that also includes uh, just request as well. Yes. Yes, and just to so everyone knows, you will still have to take public comment on those items, even though you're moving them to the next meeting, because they were agendized for this meeting. Is staff allowed to comment at this point? Well, uh, hold a sec. We have dropped items in the past from agenda, and we have never had community comment on those. So we're going to do it the right way now. So mm -hmm. is staff allowed to comment at this point? I think we should hear from the board members first. Yes, yes. Board members first, and we have two board different two staff. different board members proposing something. Yep. So I think we have to deal with those separately, don't we? No, we can put them into one if you wanted. I I think we'd be better off to do them separate. I will. Yeah. So let's take mine first, which is my proposal to drop the. Uh, I'll, I'll second that. Drop the the choice of. Uh, yes. The vice president. So we'll the that. Do we have any community? Yeah. Uh, Brian, do you have any comment on that? Yeah. Do we have any community comment on postponing the selection of a vice president of the board to replace Jamie um, until uh, we have the rest of the board members appointed? Okay. Staff? So my, my comment is just that staff are. Board, I would think about this because you don't want to find yourself in a position where then you don't have a president and then mm -hmm. you're scrambling at the beginning of the meeting and running through procedures. So I suggest, well, you have four of you to select one. You can always change it at the end of the year. It's only going to be till the end of the year. But I, I would be in favor of that if we hadn't decided to go ahead and appoint somebody right in the middle of the candidate filing period. But since this board has already made that commitment and that will be done at 8-1, we're basically looking at two weeks. Mm -hmm. We just put it on the next agenda. And that way it's fair to everybody since you guys have made the decision you want to appoint somebody in the middle of the candidate filing period. Okay. So, any Comment from the public on this? So I move that we drop. That's already been moved. I'll say seconded. Okay, let's vote on it. Yes. Ready? Yes. Okay, President Hill. Yes. Director Fultz. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. Director Largate. Yes. All those is unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Now we'll move to Director Fultz's request. Well, I'm glad to hear that we're going to be doing things the right way going forward. 
If that's the case, special meetings need to be done as special meetings, not a full agenda. If we're gonna have a full agenda, we need to give the community and the board more time to absorb it. And that's the reason for pulling these things and delaying them until uh, for two weeks, until August 1st. Um, it, you know, I get that there's only a 24 hour um, requirement for special meetings. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons they're intended to be very small and, and compact. I get that we got two days, twice as much time as minimum required, but I still work for a living. And my ability to um, do this full of an agenda in that short a period of time is not a particularly respectful thing. And it's not respectful to our community either. I get the folks that aren't working for a living may have more time. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you go over the list of items that you wanted to move again? Yeah, so I move that we um, delay the following items till the August 1st regular meeting. Um, 8C with a proviso that at, that actually be the full discussion about the strategic nature of Brackenbury and Forest Springs consolidation that this board has requested multiple times and which still hasn't been brought to the board as an agenda item for whatever reason. Uh, 9A, uh, obviously 9B, uh, which has already been done. Uh, 10A, 10B, 10C. 10D, 10F, that's it. Okay. okay, do we have comments from the public on this? Any? Yes, Did I just hear correctly that we're going to postpone the discussion of the forest spring and break and break? Well, so it's, could you it's step first. to the microphone so we can all hear you clearly? Oh. Did I hear correctly that we're going to postpone the discussion of the Forest Springs and Brack and Bray merger yep. until August 1st? It's why I drove down from Sunnyvale to attend that portion of the meeting that I'm most concerned about. So um, if, if, if this, if Director Fultz's um, motion passes, then this would be delayed until may, August 1st. May I clarify? The item Brack and Bray and Forest Springs that, on, that is on here does not cover the consolidation of it. It covers a specific pipeline requirement that the general man, interim general manager wishes us to fund. That's it. The discussion about the broader question of how we get to a consolidation of Brackenbury and Forest Springs is something that this board has requested multiple times and has still not been put on the agenda for discussion. And I think it would be up to perhaps the attorney and you, Jeff, to say whether or not we could take that agenda item that we have now and blow it out to a full discussion of the strategy. I'm not sure we can, given the way that that agenda item is written. Yeah, if I could just add, we have like $2.7 million of grant money that is due to expire at the end of August. I'm, I'm sorry, I can't hear you clearly. Oh. The big concern of the Forest Springs community in Bracken Bray is there's like $2.7 million of grant money that has been allocated towards starting this project that needs to be spent or started by the end of August and beginning of September, or we risk losing that money and starting all over. So that's our huge concern. Because we, we are intensely aware of that. Yes. Okay. And I don't know, I, I'd love to know like what needs to happen plus for us not to lose that grant money. Like does the shovel have to be in the ground? Does the engineering plan have to be committed to this project? Like in what way does it have to start for us not to lose that funding? That's what I would love to have clarity about. Okay, I know that we have had discussions on that subject, but I don't think we're prepared at this point to. I think we keep going through yes. community comment, please. Hi, um, I'm Nicole Wanderberry. You guys are familiar with yes. me. I'm the water commissioner for Brack and Bray. I have come to all the meetings that have been notified in a fashion that I know that the meetings are actually <coughs> happening. It was difficult to know that this meeting was actually occurring and it wasn't published under the board agenda and minutes, and I had to find it, dig for it. I knew there was supposed to be a meeting. I was expecting a meeting to discuss um, the Brack and Bray and Four Springs, the complete consolidation. I do recognize the concern that staff has in regards to losing the Department of Water Resources grant. 
we, Brack and Bray, I'm speaking for Brack and Bray, are highly concerned that we're going to lose our FEMA money. Um, August is a big date for us, and we have been trying to sit patiently to try to have this discussion. We've had two meetings with the staff since November to discuss this. And um, I appreciate the commitment from staff to try to make sure we don't lose the Department of Water Resources grant. Um, but we need to kind of look to the letter of intent that um, the board agreed to and staff signed off and legal counsel signed off that as a lead agency, SLB would work with us to ensure that we did not lose our FEMA grant. And currently that is not happening. I'm trying to work with Sandus, but I can't get to their plans. I can't modify the plans. I don't know what the scope of work that SLB staff wants um, for this because there's no discussion going on. That's why I've come to the board um, and begging for some way for us to get through the consolidation. I don't want us to lose the Department of Water Resources money, and I don't want us to lose the FEMA. I think our goal should be to get one consolidation. I do think that there's one another option on the table that hasn't been discussed between our FEMA money and the Department of Water Resources. Through the emergency connection we now have with SLB, we could do a consolidation. We could accomplish one consolidation. There has to be a discussion. And I appreciate that I get timed. Well, she can get timed. So I, I am trying to work by the regulations here mm -hmm. and the guidance, but please, please make this a priority. This is something that you guys signed off as a letter of intent. This is something that Brack and Brain Forest Spring actively worked with the staff from um, May of 2022 to October of 2023. And we have been at a standstill for eight months. We need help to get through this. Defer it to engineering, defer it to your finance committee, but help us get this information done. Help us have the meetings that we had in the past. Um, I fear that we're gonna lose this FEMA money and um, we don't have paid staff. It's been all volunteer. Please help us not lose this. I cannot get an extension without all the different things that we need. So I would ask you to defer this. I would ask you to make a commitment to put it on the agenda, the consolidation discussion, or find another way of doing that discussion. But I have a I have a suggestion. I can withdraw my motion with respect to item eight C. Mm -hmm. I can then we can then vote on the remaining. I would then have another motion that I would make that would require a two thirds vote, which would be I think three out of the four of us, to engage in that strategic to add to the agenda that we're going to engage in that strategic discussion around consolidation tonight, because for whatever reason we have been on it, even though this was requested at least two or three months ago, if not longer, and we're still not having the conversation that we as a board made clear that we wanted to have. So I will be happy to withdraw the, but I want a, another motion. I want the opportunity to make another motion after I withdraw that. Christina, can you comment on, can you withdraw his motion? Uh, you, just, can, you can withdraw it, but if he wants to submit a new motion that this discussion be broadened to something that was not agendized, then the board has to find that it's an, an emergency circumstance, that this is an urgent matter that cannot wait until the next meeting. Well, we, we, in, other words, in other words, we either vote on his motion as it stands or we move on, correct? Yeah. No, he can, with, he can withdraw it and make a new motion. I think we can talk one at a time. One at a time. I think we can talk one at a time. Thank you. Please, you too. It's my motion. But we can talk one at a time, can't we, Director? Can't we? We'll yes. See. Brian, we'll on please, it? don't please. talk over me either, Brian. Please. Both of you. Got it? Both of you calm down. Please. Both of you, please. Then don't talk over me first. Gentlemen, I'm going for procedure and I will follow procedure. And you will not interrupt me when I'm doing that. Do you understand, Director? You do not talk to me. Do that you way. understand, Inter General, General Manager? And you don't I'm going talk to call me like you don't stop. Christina, do you want to comment on that? 
Are we going forward with the motion or do we drop it? He can he can withdraw his motion, but if if his reasoning for withdrawing is that he wants to make a new one, we just need, everyone needs to understand that you need a three fourths vote. That this is an emergency situation and is urgent and cannot wait until the August first meeting. So, given that it's not an emergency, we either vote on it or not. That the, whether it's an emergency is a discretionary decision that is made by the board in the in their vote, and so they can have a discussion on the level of urgency and emergency. But um, from a it, it, from a legal perspective, the the code it does not define specifically what an emergency circumstance is, other than that it is something that cannot wait until the next meeting. Um, there are other situations, you know, th threats of uh, threats to facilities. There are very specific circumstances that are defined under the code, but in this circumstance, it would fall under the broader scope of the board to define an urgent situation on their own. Okay. I'd like to um, withdraw my motion. Okay. And make a new motion. Okay. The new motion would be to delay until August 1st, the following items. 9A. 10A, 10B, 10C, 10D, 10F, and leave 8C on the agenda. I'll have another motion. Okay, Wait, let's dispose of this one first. Okay. Nine, eight, ten. So there's a motion that was made. Is there a second? Do we have a second for that? No, 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 we don't have a second. Okay, so it's there's no action on it. Yes. I'd like to propose another motion, please. I'd like to declare that we have an emergency situation regarding the Bracken Brings and Forest Springs consolidation. I would like to expand the agenda to include a discussion not only of the particular item that's in the agenda, but also a strategic discussion about how we achieve consolidation of both Bracken Bray and Four Springs, something that we have requested many times and which has still not been brought to the board. I'll second that. Okay. Ready to vote? Uh, further, we need to have any okay. further comments from the board? Further comments from the public? There's two people online that have hands raised. Two people online. Um, yeah, Paige Moorhead and Karen Vitale. Let me see if I can find them here. Participants. For some reason, I don't see the attendees. Just call on one. Okay, Paige back. Moorhead. Yeah, Paige. Can we activate her comments? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. You can hear me? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for your time. My name is Paige Moorhead. I'm the Bracken Bray HOA. I'm sorry, we're not hearing. You're not hearing me? Can you hear me now? No. 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 Well, sort of. No. Sort of? Okay. Um. Sorry, this is kind of hard from my phone right now, but if you can hear me, um, this is Paige Moorhead. I'm the HOA president of Brackenbray. As um, Nicole had mentioned, you know, our FEMA funding is coming to, you know, renewal period. That's, you know, we appreciate you taking this matter really urgently. Um, and hopefully you can put this on the agenda tonight as it is a really urgent matter. I can tell you as the president of our HOA, we have had multiple meetings over every month to prepare, um, and we really want to move forward and believe that we can do so. So I just want to say thank you for your consideration and for your time, and this is really a critical and urgent matter. Thank you. Thank you, Paige. Uh, Karen Vitale is online, and then we'll go. Karen, are you still there yeah. to speak? Yes, I am. Um, I'm Karen Vitale, and I have represented the Four Springs community in discussions of consolidation for at least the last two years, attending multiple meetings 
with the staff in order to arrive upon plans that we thought were going to be put out to bid last December. Here we sit again, once again delayed, once again with a proposal for ongoing delay. And I would like to encourage that and strongly support that we have this strategic discussion tonight. We are in a situation where, as you're fully aware, I hear that, that we're about to lose funding and yet no action has been taken. I would like to emphasize the urgency of putting this together for the consolidation project. We are, the, we are using a water system that is on life support at Forest Springs. And every single month we incur five to $10,000 of expenses to patch it back together. Money that could be better used to move forward with some aspect of consolidation. We have had our rebuilders, 12 permit holders now stuck in, without fire tank and hydrant exemptions and having to find ways to come up with funding for tanks and hydrants on, on our properties. And now we're, self, we're looking for additional grant funding to try to put a hydrant system in for the community to just hold us over until consolidation occurs. This cannot be kicked down the road for another meeting and then another meeting and another meeting. And I strongly support that we discuss this as an emergency and find a way forward to just get started. The proposal that's on the table right now that was in the agenda gets us started. We have to do something to get started. And it's very clear that not only does Forest Strings and Brackenbrae benefit, but also the district benefits from having money to, to put into these upgrades and improvements and expansion in its user space. And we have been paying our taxes to in support of the district for years. It's time to give back. Thank you very much. Thank you. Ma'am? Hello. Um, I would like to introduce myself. Could you please speak up a little bit or of course. get the microphone um, closer or something? <laughs> My name is Sarah Bitsnook. I am part of the Brackenbury community. Uh, we moved to that community about four years ago. Um, that was right after the CCU fires. And we quickly came to realize um, the damage that the CCU fires had um, done to our little community. And about, let's see, Two years ago, I was made road committee um, of, of uh, the boards, and um, I was also made vice president. Sorry, <laughs> I was also made vice president of our community. Um, we don't have a lot of um, people in our community, so we kind of all do it ourselves. Everything is volunteer work um, all the time, and the effort that we spent on the FEMA project as a whole, it's been years, and we have put a lot of time and a lot of energy and a lot of effort into this. And to see it just be wasted, to see it be gone, would be devastating. We would not be able to get what we needed for our community as far as water and roads go. So I would really hope and I would really appreciate that we can make the effort to move along with it and um, reach a decision on what would be most beneficial to everybody and hopefully help our community out. Thank you. Scott? Two more online. Two more online. Um, Paige Moorhead and Nicole yes. Hohan. Okay, Nicole has not spoken yet. So, uh, Nicole, please. Hi, thank you so much. My name is Nicole Conan. I'm here. I'm a board member for Forest Springs. Um, I won't even take the full three minutes. I just want to reiterate a lot of what we've already heard tonight. But um, I really hope we do consider this an emergency situation. Um, we've already discussed that we're looking at losing funds in just six short weeks. So pushing this out another week feels like an emergency to me. Um, and as Karen said, this community is really struggling monthly to cover the cost of leaks and of kind of duct tape water system here. Um, that's continuously just bleeding us money that we could be putting towards a consolidation, towards something more, more useful. So I urge you guys to consider discussing this, considering the vast majority of the people that are here are from Forest Springs and Brackenbrae as well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, seeing no one else online, sir. Thank you for taking the time. It's Stephen Lemke, and I'm a resident of Forest Springs, or at least I was until the CCU fires that destroyed our home. Uh, 
been lived, lived there for quite a few iterations of our water system and seen the changes. And as uh, Nicole mentioned and, and Karen mentioned, the, 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 the system is on life support. Uh, very old, uh, continuously breaking down. So it's, it is really important that we get this consolidation started, completed, and without losing the funding. Um, I've been trying to build, uh, rebuild our home uh, since the fires. It's still the foundation phase. Uh, funding to get that, that home rebuilt is extremely difficult. If our community is 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 strapped with an extra two two point seven million dollars that we lose. We don't have ways to make that up. Uh, so appreciate that you that, that you elevate the urgency of this and that we get things started so we can all not only have have the consolidation but we'll also be safe. Um, because as Karen mentioned, we will be able to to um, build fire, uh, a solid fire hydrant system to protect our, mm -hmm. our community, as well as having having a, a consistent water water system. Thank you. So we're discussing Bob's specific motion at the moment, and uh, generally each person gets to speak once on a particular motion. This, this is the first time she's spoken on this motion. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, so thank you for the time. Um, I just want to reiterate that there's two parts of this. This is the 2.7 million that SLV staff has been talking to DWR and asking for extended time, which I believe that they've gotten a nod for. So the dire situation for Brackenbury is that we have uh, 1.256 million that will be lost next month. And then our ability to ask for a block grant for the remaining 10%. Um, that window is open right now and will close in October and we need a scope of work. So for us, it is a larger discussion and it is also about that we want to start permanent work construction. Um, Four Springs, I understand their urgency, but their, their, their consolidation is going to be out three to five years. Our consolidation is about today. Our consolidation is about that we have funding that we have secured Bracken Ray that we need to use or lose very much like the DWR. And that's what we're asking for. So we support Four Springs and their efforts, but they are still in the design phase. And we are at the point that we have to do the permanent work where we lose the money. So we're talking about somewhere between 1.25 and 1.4 million that Bracken Ray is bringing to the table. And we want to have discussion about that scope of work. That's why the bigger consolidation strategically needs to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Please. Well, I want to acknowledge the efforts of the Brian Bray community and in particular Karen at the Forest Springs community. My husband and I co-invested with our son a home in Forest Springs less than one year ago. In this time frame, our roads and water fee has tripled. We need to have positive feedback that our money is, is coming back with a return. We have a situation now where we're having water trucked in. We have boil water notices regularly. Water should be an assumed human right, but we are struggling to obtain clear, safe drinking water. Mm -hmm. And we just need some a little bit of assurance that the project will start. We appreciate that Bracken Bray is a little bit further ahead. They had an incredible team in their small community. Um, to put it in perspective, our community is larger at Forest Springs, but 43 homes out of 126 were lost to the fires. And these poor people that lost homes are having to put so much effort into the rebuild. It's incredible. They need 10,000 gallon tanks. They need on small lots. They need, you know, a, hydrants and so forth. It's very complex. And the longer we wait, the more those dues are going to go up. Uh, the, all the, uh, sorry, the, the dues, but also all the construction costs are just going to keep rising and it's just going to keep getting delayed as we get bids. And I just, I just beg you to get it to bid wherever you are in the project. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mr. Frost. Thank you, President. Um, I just wanted to comment, make a few comments here. Uh, there may be some misunderstanding by, um, there may be, thank you. 
It just may be a little bit of misunderstanding about what the term emergency is about. The term emergency is to be able to change the agenda from the topic at hand, which is how it's framed in the agenda, or to expand the conversation. So I want to make sure that the public and those that have comment are clear that that's the issue. I want to clarify something at the end with legal. So when I'm done talking, I'm still going to ask legal another question, if that's okay with the board. Um, Steph works a lot in present to present an item. We work long and hard. And we like to have all our facts straight, which means cross-check, triple-check, double-check, do all the things that we do. There's a lot that goes into the background of the words you see on the page. What we're presenting is what is urgent and does need to move forward, along with other items which are on the back burner and also are proceeding as well. And I'm willing to comment on those, but I, I am cautious about us expanding this conversation till we get into territory where staff can't really accurately comment and it gets into a discussion that I don't think is really ready for public airing yet because there's a lot of facets to this. So I am asking that you consider that before you make your decision. Staff prepares a lot for these items. And on the one hand, minutes ago, we were gonna strike over half of the agenda, but now we wanna expand it and have this facet that staff isn't necessarily prepared to talk about. So the question I have that now for legal is, if we're expanding this discussion and broadening it, Christina, are we in fact somehow stepping on the loose ends of the Brown Act here in terms of expanding the discussion? If the board believes that in any way um, delaying this discussion will interfere with service or public health and safety. That's really the overriding concern under the Brown Act. Um, it is notable that the motion does not include that any action be taken. It is purely a discussion item. So actually, Christine, of, it actually is a decision. There is a decision in the motion. For for something that was agendized, but the the there's no action under the broadened item of having a discussion of the st strategy for the consolidation. The I would I would encourage the board not to take any action that has not been specifically agendized um, and fettered out in this meeting. Um, so the pipeline project is already agendized. That action is 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 perfectly fine and it's there. If we're simply broadening for discussion purposes in order to uh, work this out to maybe bring action in August or do something more quickly because of a dire circumstance, then we can move forward with that, especially in light of the fact that the majority of your public there um, would appear to be um, more prejudiced by not having the broad discussion than having it. And in light of no action being taken, there there really is, it's, there wouldn't be, um, it would be a technical violation at best. Um, so it's really, it, it, the emergency circumstances um, are broadly defined and it's up to the board to make a very clear decision if you wanna move forward with this discussion on the record that you do believe that not having this discussion now could result in um, interference with services or a public health and safety issue. So my last, thank you, Christina. So my last closing remark is just that this is a very broad and inclusive bit of information in order to push this one piece of this item forward. Okay, so I just leave you with that. So I would like to comment here it is my understanding that item 8C is actually a, an opportunity for us to decide to proceed with a concrete action to actually start uh, building and upgrading the pipeline that is necessary to feed those two communities. Because right now, our pipeline that we have that 
feeds you, that would feed those two communities is not sufficient. It's my understanding that item 8C, if we proceed with that, is a concrete step towards solving the problem. That is correct. Mr. Fultz. The problem with that is that it doesn't get us to an understanding of how we achieve consolidation. It also doesn't get us to a point where we understand what the terms and conditions are of the DWR grant relative to what our performance is supposed to be. It doesn't give us any indication strategically of how we address the fact that Brackenbrae is about to lose their grant money. I, I, I understand staff's reluctance to engage in this conversation, but this request has been outstanding for multiple months and has been requested multiple times. In the meantime, the clock is ticking. I think it's very clear here that if we focus just on this particular piece, we lose sight of the bigger picture. And I wanna have a conversation about the bigger picture relative to how we're gonna prevent people from losing their grant money. As I said, it's okay. my understanding that, oh, go ahead. Uh, a question for staff. Uh, is there any action that the district can take tonight to reduce the likelihood of these grants, uh, the grant and the FEMA money being lost? Um, well, one of them, this item is directly related to us not losing the grant. It's directly tied to them. So by approving that action, uh, yeah. And that's eight. What, what's the HC? The, um, HC. So yeah. by approval of HC, that would uh, mitigate the DWR grant. Correct. As far as the FEMA one, I can say that that item has is being discussed, and it is at the staff level being discussed and being put together so that we do have something. But it's not on the agenda tonight, so I don't. I'm just cautious about commenting on it. Without, I don't want to go out of bounds there. Thank you. So I guess for my part, I think that uh, asking staff to speak off the cuff about an item that's not written up is inappropriate. Asking the board to contemplate items that are not written up is a waste of time. And uh, I think that the best thing we can do is uh, move on, contemplate 8C, uh, make a, an informed decision about that, well informed by some of the comments in the room, perhaps we'll hear more on that item. Uh, and then we have a meeting in a couple of weeks and uh, perhaps by addressing the many items, other items on this agenda, we can give staff the bandwidth and capacity to get on with the other business of the district, including this work. Mr. Fultz. Under normal conditions, I'd be okay with that, but we do not have normal conditions here. We have been sitting on this topic for years. We have been sitting on this topic relative to the board giving specific direction, wanting to hear this for months. There are considerations here that I believe the board needs to know about from the community. It is selfish of us to focus strictly on the DWR grant and exclude the considerations of the community and their concerns, which is what it sounds like is being proposed here. That I wanna hear more about. I wanna hear from the community. I wanna understand the issues here. I wanna understand how we get to a consolidation because right now this pipeline as proposed doesn't get us anywhere close to consolidation. And I have requested multiple times the agreement between, from staff, the agreement between DWR and the San Lorenzo Valley Water District, and it has not been delivered to me. It is outrageous that I can't see that as part of making the decision here to understand what is our obligation to deliver on that grant money. I want to see it in writing. And I don't know why it's such a hard thing for that to happen, but this all needs to come out in a discussion and out of that discussion may be specific direction to staff from the board on what to do to get us ready to actually deal with the community in a substantive fashion rather than what I perceive as 
nothing happening. Ms. Barrett says we've had, she's had two meetings with staff since last November. What? Ms. Barrett says she can't get a hold of any of the Sandus information, and yet we're asking them to pay for part of that work. What the heck is going on? I want to know what's going on. And we're not going to get that if we just keep kicking down the can down the road. I have no confidence that staff is going to bring anything back on 8-1 to have the conversation that we asked for months ago. Either we do it tonight and we start addressing what the community says, or we basically are telling the community to go pound sand. So we have a motion on the table. We have and a motion second. on the table. We have a second. Yes. We have a second. Let's have a vote. Let's have a vote. Um, I'm sorry, before um, we move forward, um, can we get a, this should probably be a more clear motion on I would like it to be rephrased so that the board is finding that an emergency circumstance exists. Well, given that we haven't done this specifically in the past on any items that we've added to the agenda, could you please suggest what that language may be? And I'll file it away for future use. So um, the motion should be that the board makes a specific finding that an emergency circumstance exists justifying broadening the discussion under item 8c to the strategy for the whole consolidation and not just the pipeline project referenced let's do that thank you very much <laughs> you're welcome i appreciate that and it was seconded by Smalley, so let's vote. Are we ready to vote? I think we are. Okay. President Hill? No. no. Okay. Uh, Director Fultz? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Director Largay? No. Okay. Sorry, guys. Community gets shafted again. So oh, let's proceed with the meeting. We'll just try and be professional about this. So yes. what's is item eight C still on the agenda or not? It is. Yes. 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 It is. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, it seems to me that item eight C okay. will uh, we're on to eight eight. Yeah, we're on to eight eight. Are we not on seven? Uh, we're the we're on uh, six inch here. We're modifying your agenda. Seven is for oral communication. Right? That's correct. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yes. Um, I know that we have some new board members. Um, our plans have been uh, been in writing from Sandus since May sixteenth of two thousand twenty three. Our FEMA funds have been obligated since February twenty second of twenty twenty two. Um, next month, August is a big month for that FEMA money. Up to this point, the state has had the ability to authorize the extension. It's done annually. The next one will be done by FEMA. And based off of the ability to state where this project is for consolidation, there is a high likelihood that we've been told by the governor monthly that we will lose this funding. Um, I appreciate the staff supporting Four Springs going out and getting an application submitted for their state revolving fund for design. We have money to do permanent work. We have money to resolve damage that happened to Brackenbrae. Okay. We are ready to work together. We worked solidly with the state, I mean, not the state, but the staff until October of 2023. We have been waiting for months to work together. The only recourse that we've had is to come to the board monthly since March asking for this meeting to happen. So it disappoints me that after the board has asked for staff to agendize this larger discussion of strategic discussion on consolidation, that the board has not taken it seriously. What you should also know is that the board in May of 2023 
or rather 2022, signed off on an agreement called a letter of intent to work with Brackenbrae and had a separate letter of intent to work with Four Springs. In that, Brackenbrae did most of the negotiation and stressed that we had this deadline for FEMA. SLV did not put their deadline in there for Department of Water Resources. There is clauses in there that we are both put uh, good faith efforts into this process. It has been eight months that we have been asking for information. We cannot respond to the governor's office and give them what is necessary to do the extension. And we will not be able to do that for the federal government. It is over a million dollars that we will lose for 24 homes to do a connection. That is about 50,000 per household. It is a serious matter. It is an emergency. I implore you to figure out a place where we can have this discussion. It used to be that we would have monthly meetings. That is in our letter of intent. I implore you to help me remove the barriers. Sandis cannot help us because SLB is the lead agency. Tell me how what I need to do because I'm not getting the help that I need to. I don't understand why we can't all get in the same room and just take care of this. I honestly am paralyzed. And to be honest with you, my husband wants to move out of the area. There is nobody behind me in Brock and Bray who's equipped to do this. I've had um, staff been told to go around me, not to talk to me, to work through this. So I implore you, if I am a volunteer and we have no staff and we have secured over a million dollars, why will you not help us get to consolidation? Why do you not see this emergency? I just don't understand. Um, I'm disappointed. And I have been asked multiple times to run for this board. And I haven't because I felt it was a conflict of interest. Because I feel like I need to put rapid brain ahead of all things. I have done my, I have, I have put so much time and energy. I have put my job on hold. I am just asking for a little bit of cooperation to make rapid and break consolidation happen. If you would have taken the time, I would have showed you the estimate I got from Sanis. I would have showed you how we would phase it out. And that if you had read the application for DWR, you would have seen that there were three lanes to be addressed in that application, along with the pump house. So to complete the consolidation for property rate, it's attainable. And we're getting emergency water service from SLP. And I have checked the pressures, and they're all in the 50s. We are receiving the necessary pressure. We can make consolidation happen for one of the two. But by moving forward on this action item tonight without addressing the larger thing, you're missing the bigger picture. I was told by staff to have the higher elevation. I have the higher elevation. After Brock and Bray's Four Springs, after Four Springs' Big Basin, please consider that you need to have a discussion on the larger strategy that you promised to do. Mr. Holloway. I'm Chris Holloway from Boulder Creek. I think from what I've heard, you're going to need more meetings. You might need a meeting next Thursday. Or you might need another meeting in August. But uh, it seems like you have a pretty full agenda tonight, and I'm, I, I anticipate that there's a pretty full agenda on August 1st. So I think you ought to have more meetings. Um, I'm very disappointed to hear that Charlie Blanchard resigned. Um, I think that, uh, well, I guess I, um, I think the district obtained more grant funding, more millions and millions of dollars of grant funding while Carly was here than at any time in the past. Uh, I think she was the best environmental programs manager. Um, at the June 6th meeting, I think, uh, the Valley Gardens Santos mitigation was on the agenda. And I watched Carly make that presentation. And she seemed to me like she was doing an unnatural act. Uh, somebody else said, described it as a hostage situation. Um, so I think that she was asked to do something that she didn't believe in, to say some things that she didn't believe in. And she was visibly uncomfortable. And I think that's why she resigned. 
And frankly, I think the district would be better off if she were the general manager. Um, there's there's an issue in Felton that I learned about. I guess I'm just telling you about this. I know there's millions of dollars going on, but um, on March 11th, when I filed the measure text for the initiative, and began circulating the uh, the petition. I also bought a voter list because we wanted to give the filter out duplicates on the initiative petition. And it turned out that the very first person who signed the petition uh, is a registered voter and is a customer of SLB Water District, but is not in the district. So there's a couple of houses that I have found in Felton that apparently merged into the district in 2008 at the time of the Felton merger. And um, these houses are not in the, in the district. These people cannot vote. There's three voters there that I know of. Um, I talked to Joe Serrano about it at LAFCO, and he isn't going to do anything. Um, so maybe it doesn't matter to the district. But I, I, by the way, I don't know if there are more houses. I only found two, but maybe there are more. Uh, and only the district knows who, who the customers are and what the district boundaries are. So I, I don't know if these people are ever going to get to vote. Thank you, Mr. Holloway. We have six weeks and we lose the funding. I just want to clarify I'm that. sorry, I, I can't we hear you. We have right. six weeks before yes. we lose our funding. If you plan to move this to the next meeting, how long are we going to have before we may lose our funding? How long does it take to get everything situated in order for us to even move forward? I'm just wondering why you're, why it's a no. Why are you not moving forward with something that you've been told about since November, maybe even before that? Why is it a no? Do you not want to help Brack and Bray out, hold your freak out? Like, this is something that we've brought up countless times. The whole parish has helped us a lot, or has to be water districts multiple times. And like she said, she has been disregarded. She has been she has been ignored. Why do we need to spend the next couple of weeks that we have left trying to do the same thing that we've been doing for months? I would just love for you guys to try and reconsider. I think that would be extremely important to Boulder Creek as a whole, um, Brack and Ray, who's now on emergency water. It's fine, it works. But is it gonna is it gonna keep working? Is it gonna keep being an emergency tie-in? What's the plan? If we lose this funding, we have nothing. What then? Who's gonna deal with that? We have security guys, team of lunch to help us get this moving. I really, really beg of you to reconsider your news. Thank you. Okay. So do we have page online Paige Moorhead? Hi, yes. Can you hear me this time? Yes. Yes, okay. Thank you. I just wanted to um, reiterate everything that Nicole and Sarah have said that this is an urgent matter and that Brack and Bray is diligent in working towards consolidation and that this is an urgent matter. Um, I also want to express that our board over and over again have said that we put our full confidence in Nicole um, and her ability to lead us. I would really, really hope that in the near future, hopefully tonight, that you'll listen to everything that she has to say as a community. We have worked diligently to have meetings, to have discussions, to prepare over and over and over again. And it's very disappointing to over and over again be pushed aside and to not meet what our letter of intent stated. This is an urgent matter in which we are gonna lose. And I know we've said this a million times when a million dollars are gonna be lost if we do not get on top of this matter. As somebody who loves my community and somebody who has served on our board for the last two and a half years and is the president currently, I just ask that you respect us and respect our time and our energy because we want 
to work with you and we want to give over our infrastructure to you. We want to get out of the water business. And I just wanted to say, you know, I just want to say that um, we really, really need your support. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Karen Vitale. I'd like to speak on, I'd like to speak on I've got a point of order here. Um, the comments that we're now receiving on Forest Springs and Bracken Bray are about an item that's on the agenda. Um, this public comment period is for items that are not on the agenda, and these are. It's, it's 8C, and we are going to talk about it further. Can we, if we have other comments that are not on the agenda, okay, but this item is already there. Point of order. Thank you. Point of order. What people are commenting about is the need to have that broader strategic discussion. And within the context of that, they're well within their rights to comment on that. That is not part of the agenda as this board okay. made a decision not to do that. And I think it's really appropriate for us to hear from the community and for the board to hear from the community, particularly when we have so much money at stake here. Mm -hmm. Christina, can you comment on that? The item has already been voted on. Um, do we still need to have public comment on it? Or they're, te we... they're technically commenting on something that is not agendized because the board didn't okay. add it, but I okay. will mention that there are duplicate <laughs> comments happening, and if the public has already commented I... on a certain subject, they're not supposed to comment on it again. My ear, then. Okay. Excuse me. Proceed. Okay. President so. Uh, may I still make my comment? Yes, please. Okay, thank you very much. So this is Karen Vitale from Forest Springs again. This is starting to align with, this is starting to line up as Bracken Bray versus Forest Springs. Bracken Bray will get their project, which then gets them their money. And Forest Springs doesn't, you know, this, this first pipeline section, which is important to us, doesn't happen. I would like to see that we can work to a solution that benefits both of the communities that have suffered so much in the fire and need this consolidation so much. Four Springs is not functional at this point, not highly functional. We get by, that's as best as we can do. And we're holding our system together and we're meeting the state regulations for water. But we can't also be indefinitely postponed. So I think we have to work to a, a, a a solution to this that isn't all Brackenbrae or all Forest Springs. We have, we both both communities have these letters of intent and consolidation in our in our planning. Thank you. Okay, seeing no more hands up online and no more comments here. Uh, let me gather my thoughts here. Where are we? Um, 8A. 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 So let's return to the agenda. And does staff have a presentation on 8A? Yes, thank you, President. Um, as you recall, we had this on the agenda previously. Um, I wanted to just remind the board what you are actually deciding on. You're finding that the proposed conditions for the issuance of a well served letter is both reasonable and consistent with the district rules and res regulations were applicable. I am paraphrasing, by the way, and directs the interim general manager to issue a well served letter to Ropes and Homes for this Valley Gardens project. Um, I wanted to point out there was some comments. Um, the district isn't the permitting agency, hence the district may not impose requirements on the development other than the connection fees and the upgrade costs. Um, and of course, the um, building of the, the residents and the connections once they're up and running. Um, the board did ask for an email um, from a Cal engineering, which is our engineer that was reviewing the work of 
the Schaff and Wheeler folks, and we've attached that to the, the memo this time, confirming their concurrence with the findings. Um, I will point out there was some concerns about water efficiency, and I, I can't say that the development of this type being the footprint that it's consuming, et cetera, is far more efficient than what we have in the valley here, where we have large parcels, lots of landscaping, et cetera. And so I know that that was also mentioned to be a concern. And current law actually is right now, it's a 55 gallons per day per person rule. California is basically trying to ratchet down that number. Every so many years, they come down in 2030, it'll be 50 gallons per minute. So developments have to meet that standard by what technologies, whether it's dual flush or low flush toilets, et cetera, all your aerators on your showers and faucets, et cetera, um, the appliances. But that's, anyway, what I'm saying is this is built to <laughs> the, the highest standards, water efficiency standards there are. There was another comment about use of recycled in the backyards of residential properties. Well, the issue there is you have the purple pipe, which is carrying recycled water, and then you have the potable water from the district. It gets a little bit complex infrastructure-wise. You've got some extra plumbing hoops to go through, backflow preventers, et cetera. When you combine a recycled water line with potable line when you're entering a dwelling. And again, these backyards are they're actually quite small compared to like maybe what the average is in the district. So I don't know, something something to consider. Um, the front yards and the rest of the area is landscaping is largely is fed by recycled water. So I just wanted to add those points. We have had this on the agenda before, like I mentioned. Um, I guess the last thing was it was the estimate is right now is at 42 acre feet for the entire development, which is about 2% of the district's current usage. Um, so with that, I will take questions. We also have folks from Rovers and Homes. We also have the engineer, Jeff Wheeler, of disturbance. Okay. Brian, do you have any questions? I have no questions. Mark. Um, I appreciate the uh, email that you obtained from uh, our engineering firm, recognizing that what Schaffen Wheeler provided uh, met all of their uh, requirements. Um, and uh, based on that, I have no other questions on this. You've met what I think you need to do to say that, yes, this meets what we need as a district. So thank you. Director Falls. Yeah, I have a few questions. Um, but first I wanna say that the comment that the interim general manager made regarding our role is very clear. Um, unless there's some really compelling reason we can't do this, we have to do this. Yes. And I think that's been you know the position of everybody here right from the start. Um, so hopefully that um, will put people's minds at ease. I did have a couple of questions about the information that was in here uh, as I was going through it in a little bit more detail. Is it the case that all of the service lines inside of this development, uh, actually, I guess it would be called infrastructure lines, not the service lines of the house, but the infrastructure and the streets and all that are six inches or above? Um, I think there are some floors on little stub yeah, and, and, or or... and I was I was curious about that. If there are four inch, is there a reason for that? I I thought that our standard for infrastructure was six so to eight inches. Current or proposed? Um, that going forward with anything new that is to be installed is a minimum of six inches or eight inches. So everything everything is is eight or 10 inches it's getting upgraded. Okay, fine. I mean, that, 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 so I guess the district standards. I, if I can finish my question before answering it, perhaps that would help. So if there are four inch lines in the streets, what is the reason for that? Is there any fire flow considerations or what have you that would need to make those lines bigger than four inches? We have, 
But what I, as, as I'm saying, we are upgrading any four inch lines that are there. We're bringing it up to eight or 10 inches. Let, let me, let me, yes. be, let me be very specific here. Let me go to the page. Let me see here. I mean, to frame so I'm going point. to page. I'm going to page 19, and I'm looking at what I think are the waterline uh, configurations. I see six inch W. I wouldn't. I eight wouldn't inch rely w. on this image. So this is a, an attachment to the shock and wheeler analysis. This is an outdated site plan, and this has this is not the current plan. So why would it be included in here? It's this, it's an attachment to the shop and wheeler analysis. Well, they did the analysis then based on incorrect information. I, I don't it was understand. Preliminary information. Director, I can answer your question another way. We are bringing everything up to our most current standards. There for fire flow. The the. All the pipelines that we're replacing, all the upgrades are so that we have adequate fire flow along that whole corridor to include that development. And were all the calculations done based on the figure in page 19, or were they done based on that upgrade? Well, if you recall the back and forth as we asked for that one last email that confirmed all the calculations and that our engineer blessed all the stuff that their engineers did. I'm sorry, that, that doesn't answer my question. Are, were the calculations done based on a standard of fire flow at six and eight inches or four and six inches? You want me to answer that? Please. Okay. All right. Andy Sturman, Scott Miller Engineers. You're looking at my report. <clears throat> the fire flow analysis for the subdivision uh, was based on the eight inch trunk main that runs down the main street. We didn't put fire demands at the end of every cul-de-sac to see if the individual pipe in the street would, you know, serve a hydrant. Because we didn't know where the hydrants were going to be, and we know that when the deep the system goes through detailed design by the civil engineer who's laying out all the infrastructure, those plans will come to your engineering staff for review, and that's the point at which they'll verify that all the pipes meet the minimum size requirements of the district. So our analysis was based on housing count and size of the trunk main running through the system, uh, mainly looking to make sure that all the offsite pipes that need to be uh, replaced or upsized were identified as they are in the uh, your agreement. So then with respect to the data on page 37 and 38, relative to the surplus calculations that we have, those then aren't based on what's actually going to be in the subdivision, but only on what's in the eight inch pipe in the main street. Is that correct? Uh, as far as like, I'm not sure what's on page 37 of the package. Well, it's, it's the, uh, it's table two supply versus demand analysis and table three storage capacity analysis. And the reason I'm asking for that is on the storage capacity analysis, we basically are cutting our surplus in half through this. I wanted to make sure that that fact that we're cutting our surplus in half is going to cover everything that they need in the subdivision, which means that all the calculations were done based on what the reality was going to be in the subdivision. Right. Yeah, that calculation is based on the total demand from the system, not on the capacity of an individual pipe at the end of the system. I, I get that, but but the pipe in the, in the subdivision is going to impact this, will it not? If they were trying to decide between an eight inch pipe and, and a six inch pipe and a 10 inch pipe for the, the pipe that loops through the subdivision and connects at both ends, the demand on that pipe is the same because it's based on the housing count. Okay. All right. So they opted on the eight inch pipe because it conveys a thousand gallons per minute, which actually conveys 1500 gallons a minute, which is the required fire flow for the, for the apartments. It's the highest flow. Uh, because it's connected to your system at two points. So it's feeding wherever, whichever hydrant you use, it's feeding from two directions. On the issue around the tank surplus, given that we are having our surplus based on these calculations, I'm curious why any kind of tank upgrades were not part of the consideration for the development, that we focus really strictly on pipes. 
But you've got the new probation tank. It, it's got yeah. 500 and something thousand gallons. I don't remember the number off the top of my head. I understand that. We went within, from within your water storage tank, you have fire storage, which is gallons per minute times so many minutes required. And that didn't really change because you're serving the same area. Uh, you have emergency storage, which is your maximum day demand. Uh, you know, park away for a, for a day when the power's out. And then you have your operational storage at the top, which is uh, cycling time between when the wells turn off or when you're asking to turn back on. All right. And so you're, you've eaten into some of that emergency storage. You know, the amount of, you added more emergency storage than your minimum standard required for your neighborhood because you were building a new tank and you made it as big as you could. Yeah, yeah, I'm this sorry. neighborhood uses some of that added capacity because that's what you built it for. I'm not sure what the issue is. Well, I'm, I'm just trying to understand. So when I look at the surplus on page 38 for the storage capacity, it's 0 0.08 today. After the, the the deployment of the subdivision will be 0 0.04. That is a substantial reduction. Was that tank, the use of that surplus, factored into any kind of additional storage requirements that we would need to have, given that it's very likely Scotts Valley is going to continue to grow? And there will be other future developments that will be going in. So, so that analysis was by Akel, not by Jacques and Wheeler. So you, you would have to direct that question okay. to Akel. Akel right. did not, in their comments, recommend making the tank bigger. Well, I don't and think, I mean, obviously, you can't make the tank bigger. I mean, that's. Well, yeah. but, I mean, they, they did not recommend adding additional storage capacity. So, um, portions of Scotts Valley that are within the district are essentially built out. There's going to be no more large developments there. We we don't really know that. Well, I I live there. I know that there's infill homes here and there going into vacant lots, but there's no no one's going to be putting 200 homes or we, large apartment we, buildings in, in within the district in that we, area. We don't know, given where California has gone with zoning, and the, and the removal of the ability for local agencies to control a lot of that. We don't know how Scotts Valley may ultimately get, re get reconfigured. So what I'm trying to do here is make sure I understand if that was it, factored into the decision. Storage capacity was not, apparently. So we, we reduce our surplus, but we're not worried about it at this point. Surplus was it's not true that it wasn't factored. Okay. It was determined to be adequate. Okay. It wasn't flagged as being inadequate. Yeah. Okay. So we basically have enough capacity before we hit zero of another similar um, subdivision if Scotts Valley re were to reconfigure themselves in some way. Uh, I, I don't see any other subdivisions in that part of town. Yeah, we'll see. There's, there really isn't land for it and none of them are within our district. Yeah, we'll see. Okay, great. Um, I had one other question. And I did spend two years on the general plan committee for the city of Scotts Valley. So everything that has gone before with respect to zoning and planning is out the window, given the new laws that have been passed. Let's see if I have anything else. Okay, I think you answered that one too. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, then before we go out to the public, I'd like to make the motion. Uh, that the board finds the proposed conditions for issuance of a will serve letter to Robson Homes for the Valley Gardens development project, both reasonable and consistent with district rules and regulations where applicable, and directs the interim general manager to issue the will serve letter to Robson Homes for the Valley Gardens development project and authorizes the interim general manager to execute non substantive modifications as necessary. That's the motion. Okay. Do we have comments from the public on this? Um, okay. Uh, we have one person online, Karen. Oh, no, she's 
Is she active? No, no she no. just removed her hand. Yeah. Director Largate, do you have any comment on this? I have no comment. Okay, let's call the vote. We 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 have a we have, we have, have a motion. Second. second. There we okay. Go. Okay. I will vote now. <laughs> President Neal. Yes. Director Polk. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. Director Largate. Yes. Passes unanimously. Thank you all. Okay. The next item on the agenda, item eight, Dave Valley Gardens offsite Sand Hills mitigation. Staff have a presentation. There's noise and ventilation. I'm trying to balance both. So um, thank you, President. Thanks. Um, Valley Gardens offsite Sand Hills mitigation. Um, this one, I will, when we get to it, I do want to make a modification to the uh, motion. So a modification. Um, basically, what I wanted to say is the district has the need to mitigate 40 acres of sand hills for the June beetle in the Olympic watershed there. Um, Olympia watershed. With the sale of this additional 10 acres to Robson Homes for the development, and I, it's approximately 10 acres because it depends on the condition of the land and final assessments and so on. Um, we can essentially fund our own mitigation along with funding this land and be the, basically afford to be the land steward now for 50 acres, all on their the dime of this sale. When we came to you last time, the price that we had, we based the price on the comparable sale, which Robson had bought 10 acres from Ziani Land Bank. Um, for $4.37 a square foot, which equates to about $1.9 million. So we based it on that, but as we brought it to the board, we found out that the posted price on the Zayani Land Bank had gone up to $6 a square foot, meaning that with the price would be $2.6 million. Discussions and negotiations and also discussions with folks outside of this, other consultants that are familiar with these kinds of transactions said, okay, that's probably more like the asking list price versus the actual sales price. But we agreed again to do a little more negotiating, decided, okay, let's split the difference. So now we're at $5.20, um, which gets us about 2.3 million. Still plenty to do our own mitigation, 40 acres that we're already going to do, and the 10 acres, providing the 10 acres for this, um, for the ropes and homes for the Valley Gardens development. From a financial standpoint, from as a your interim general manager standpoint, is seeing this as sort of like in lieu having in lieu operating funds or in lieu reserve funds because it's funds that we will not have to spend on this ourselves. We will not have to spend our own funds on the 40 acres. So we're getting it all through this transaction. Um, I think that's pretty much it. I, I think it's um, it's a good it's a good deal for the district. It's it's solid financially. Um, and it is separate. I mean this decision is of course separate from the will serve, which we just decided on. So one doesn't negate the other or vice versa. Um, and I think with that, I'll leave it open for questions to staff at this point. Brian. The, uh, the, my understanding is that Ropes and Homes is doing their own HCP for uh, the impacts their project will have to Sand Hills. Uh, and that will then, uh, point towards that document will point towards these acres as the mitigation for it. Um, my understanding is that there may be some costs incurred by the district associated with onboarding those additional lands. And uh, the fee assessed, the 520 uh, um, uh, fee is, um, 
intended to offset those costs in addition to meeting all of the other mitigation requirements of Robinson Homes. Is that is that correct? Correct, because it goes into a I forget the exact term, but you're basically putting it into a, a holding account. It's a, uh, you're putting it in. An escrow account. Not an escrow, but it's a, because an escrow would mean that. Yeah. That would be post-transactional, but this is an account that basically you can pay your expenses out of. But it is, you are somewhat tethered with what you can do with that money. Like we can go buy a tractor with it, for, for instance, or something. But we can use it to maintain this property. And the mass shows it's comfortably into perpetuity. Great. So our mitigation of the 40 acres plus the 10 that we're gonna sell there. Thanks. Director Smalley. Yes, um, I appreciate the staff has been able to uh, um, negotiate a fee that in my mind is more comparable to what it should be from the 1.9 million to now uh, 2.265 million. So thank you for that. Um, I note that we have 95 total acres of Sand Hill, 50 that we would be dedicating into the HCP uh, overall, leaving us still with 45 if there is a need for us to do something in the future for further mitigation. So I'm happy that we're not uh, selling off anywhere near everything, but there's roughly half of that. Um, I do have one question on the um, agreement uh, that we're striking, and it's on page uh, 62 of the agenda, um, item D, where it describes it as um, 10.5 acres or such other number equivalent habitat. Um, does that mean to imply that it might be more or less? Yes, and that's what I wanted to thank you for reminding me. 10.5? Yes. Okay. Is that the extent of your question? Or y yes, okay. I, I was. So my understanding is that the uh, the land has to be, there is a final assessment process, and depending on the exact condition of the land, when they go out and have a look at it, it could be, it could vary slightly the, the exact acreage, which is why I need to modify the motion, because the motion specifically says a lump sum payment, and that's not true. What we are in the agreement is we're agreeing to $5.20 a square foot. Right. Which will come out approximately to that number, but it yes. could be slightly less, it could okay. be slightly more. Right. Because they actually, I think it's closer, the true estimate is closer to 10.5, is it's going to come out slightly. So essentially, yeah, that's okay. And that's why I need to modify because the motion is incorrect. It's, it's on the um, square footage basis that we end Correct. up agreeing and I, to at the 520. I caught that and was okay. going to change it okay. myself. And then I thought, no. And then we had a, anyway, okay. I understand, I understand why we're doing it the way we're doing it. Those are, those are my questions. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Falls. Uh, yeah, a couple of questions. And then are we commenting later or are we commenting now? We're commenting now. Okay. Um, at the last meeting we discussed, um, I believe we were going to replace Jody McGraw Consulting with San Lorenzo Valley Water District, so as not to introduce a third party into the agreement. Um, um, obviously, we can farm it out to whomever we want, but if, God forbid, Jody McGraw was not available to do it or what have you, I, it, it's just better to keep the agreement between the two parties, not introduce another person into it. I think we said we were going to take that out and replace it. That's in B. Yes. And then in C, um, there's a statement in here that Water District is currently preparing to expand the existing habitat by approximately 50 acres. Um, is it 40 acres or 50 acres? because I thought we were going to do 40, and then we would only do the additional 10 if we needed to under this agreement. 
I'm not sure I understood that reference. I'm sorry, which page of the agreement are you on? That's 62, sections B and C. B for the Jody McGraw and C for the 40 versus 50. I don't see any mention of Jody McGraw in here, and I don't. It's, it's, a B line. it's the fifth line. Yeah, it's like the fifth line. May, may I comment on that? Well, I was going to say, I'm sorry, following the last meeting, our office did make that change. I think it just didn't end up in this agenda, but it, it was changed pursuant to the board's decision at the last meeting or the board's direction, okay. excuse me, at the last meeting. Okay, that, that's fine. It's a typographical error. And so when you, when you, if, if you approve it now, you can again approve it with that change okay. that's on the record that it's not going to be that it will be a okay. unnamed consultant right. and a consultant be... agreed to by the parties. Fair enough. You could it would be helpful maybe if you came up with that language when uh, we got ready to make the motion. Yes. Um, and then on the fifty versus forty, I mean, what are we doing fifty uh, currently? And that's um, on the third, there are the one, two, three, four, five, six line down and, and C. I don't, uh, my understanding was it was 40. And Christine, I don't know. Do you, have, do you have your version of the contract there? I always like to look at the current version. Uh, my version only had the consultant change. It didn't have any other changes to it. So we are doing 50 regardless. Not 40, because the preface to all this was we're doing 40 and we're adding 10. Yeah, which is 50. It says here we are in the process of doing that. Mm -hmm. That's different than we're doing 40 and we're going to add 10. Yes. So what I'm trying to do is get to what is the base condition that we're going into this I understand with. it's 40. 40, okay. So as a typo, we can change. That. Yeah, that'd be great. And um, Christina, is that non-substantive change at this point? Well, I would say yeah, it's... It, it, it's a change that can be made at the board direction with the motion that's made. So I'm I'm making notes, and I'll help you through it. So I I want to make sure I'm understanding the this agreement because it looks to me in reading the the specifics around the closing, that this is a bit asymmetrical. So if I understand this correctly, and I'm hoping someone can confirm this, at any time, Robson can say, effectively, we're out. And I guess the reason for that would be Zianti got a whole bunch of additional land. They got a lower price they're going to offer you. You're basically going to take that. But you have the ability that, that Robson has the ability at any time for any reason at their convenience, they can terminate this agreement. Christina, can you confirm? prior prior to the closing date? Can you confirm that? Well, prior to closing date. Closing date is not execution of the contract. Okay. So this is not unlike your typical purchase agreement. And that is very standard that there could be termination prior to closing um, rather than that they're bound by just simply executing this agreement. So if that, that, that you would be, want to agree to that, that's one thing. I, I understand that, but I want to make sure I'm understanding it because this isn't just a normal purchase and that I don't have something that I'm ready to sell off the bat. I got to go do something. I got to spend time, money, staff, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so I want to make sure that we're just absolutely clear as a community what's involved here. Robson can cancel at any time. So even after we execute this, that 2.3 million is not in the bag, period. The only thing that's in the bag is $7,500. And so my question is, how far along are we in the process of applying for the 40 acres? How much time, effort, money, cost, what have you, is it going to take to add the 10? Are we starting from zero and we're going to just do 50? And so it's really not much incremental? Or are we already well down the road on 40 and we got a bunch of costs that we're going to have to incur to get the additional 10? 
because what I'm looking for here is 100% coverage on our cost. It's okay you have the uh, termination for convenience, but I want to make sure we're completely whole if they terminate anything up to one minute before closing. Um, well, first off, I wanted to, again, if I may, I'm president, I'd like to confirm again with legal how much of that is exactly true according to the contract. They, they, once we sign the contract, is there a clause that says they can still back out or for any reason? Or is once we sign, it's we've sealed the deal? No. So you're not bound to, just to be clear, you're not bound to acquire that other property in debt. Like you, if the, dis the district has to pursue it in good faith. And so this terminates also if the district cannot obtain that, that land. So if you can't obtain the land, the, the money goes, you know, then the, you're not losing anything other than your efforts to try to obtain it. And so if your your goal is to try to do this at no cost to the district, then this agreement would need to be revised to estimate that cost. Right? I, I want to be I want to be really clear about this. Right. Actually, I'm sorry. I'm still asking this question. Oh, sorry. I thought she answered it for you. And I no, wanted no. to follow up on that. No, I'm still answering. I'm still not clear because she answered a different question. Right. Yeah, she did. Yes, she did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Brad Bray, yeah. can you repeat yes. your question? Yes. What I'm asking is, can Robeson, at what point can Robeson back out of this and we do not collect our money when we pass go? Is it, is it when they sign the deal, is it done and then... They are. Are we waiting? We give them till they actually have a development that's viable. I mean, what are their what are their out clauses? I mean, for any reason they could they could back out even after they sign. Are you saying? Because that's yeah. yes, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Can I talk? Mm -hmm. Yes, please. For the record, my name is Mark Robson. I'm the president and owner of Robson Homes. The agreement provides contingency for both parties. The district needs the, 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 the I think a relevant assumption was asked by Director Foles. What is the amount of land that we're you're starting? Is it 40 or 50 acres? We came into this because the district was already in the process of developing a HCP. And we were, in, and we can piggyback onto that. It would be a win-win situation. The district was already going to develop land, and we were going to pay into that. And both parties would it would be good for both parties. The district still needs to get the ACP approved and done. We still need to get our project zoned and approved in Scotts Valley, and so there is a contingency on both sides. And that's why that's how this was that's how this was uh, considered relative to the cost the district is the the base assumption has always been the district is in the process of doing this anyway mm -hmm. and Judy McGraw put us together with you guys mm -hmm. and, it, and we could contribute into mm -hmm. that work and that was really the, the base assumption and just to be clear, both parties can terminate any time before the closing date. So execution of this agreement is really an agreement to move forward in good faith, which also includes a $7,500 deposit. But I'll we'll make sure we're clear. Not your fault. One more. I'm, one I'm, more. So, I'm sorry, guys. This is not you backing out only if you don't get your development approved. It says without limiting any or all of Robson's home's rights and remedies, Robson Homes shall have the right to terminate this agreement at any time, providing written notice of such election to Water District at any time. This is a total convenience for you. Right. You could, in fact, go to Zianti, get a better deal, and withdraw I once could. they have their lamp. I want to make sure everybody knows what we're getting into. I understand. I'd like to ask, right? ask a question. What I, happens if I'm ready to start and you, I, don't, have your, you don't have your permit line? Hang on. I haven't finished yet. On our side, we have the right to terminate this agreement in the event the application and request to create the expanded habitat is denied. So on the one hand, 
you have total convenience at any time for any reason. We can terminate only if we fail. It is not a symmetrical agreement. Because of that, I want to make sure that all of our costs of doing that additional 10 acres and all the effort associated with it is completely covered by the deposit. If 7,500 is going to cover it all, 100%, and a year from now, come back and we say, yep, covered everything, that's great, we're done, and you withdraw, perfect. Mm -hmm. I'm skeptical that 7,500 will do it, depending on where we are in the process. Yeah. of our 40 acres. And that's what I'm trying to get to. By the way, I'm not asking for any changes or anything. I just want to make sure it's crystal clear to everybody what the rights are of each party under this contract. Mm -hmm. So where are we with this process? Is $7,500 sufficient to cover 100% of our costs of doing that additional 10 acres? I would surmise it probably isn't. But we would be, you know, we're we're obliged to do this 40 acres anyway, doing this additional bit. I think that the timing of it is such that we would certainly don't have to go plunging ahead until we have, we're getting to some point where we know that we're fully on board and we've reached this date. So we don't necessarily, we can, I'm sure that we can stretch timelines and juggle this. And staff would be very judicious about how much we put in of our own funds as we're going down this path until we get to such a point where it's like, okay, we're all in, let's all get on the train and we'll do the 50 acres together in the HCP. Uh, Brian, if I can follow up on that. Where are we in the process of getting 40 acres? Have we started that process? Are we almost done with the process? Where uh, do we stand? Call Carly Blanchard, who's on vacation at the moment. So I, I couldn't answer that question at the moment. I'd have to check in with somebody. Okay, because there is no there is no date at which everybody's saying, yep, we're ready to go. They can terminate at any time for any reason. The only date upon which that partnership is formulated, because it's not a partnership until this date is the closing date definition, which is we got the habitat for their 10 acres. Period. So any money that we expend over the $7,500 is money that we're putting in at risk. They have no obligation of any kind to follow through on this up to a minute before closing date. That is a minute before we get our approval. None. I don't, I'm, I'm not trying to be rude. I'm just trying to say that's the reality. We do not have a partnership here. We have a we have a one-sided agreement. Your attorney said it's cancellation is mutual. The cancellation is not mutual. It's it not, mutual. not It is not a mutual cancellation. The the plain language here says that we have the right to terminate this only if we get denied. Okay, is, the, is the district going to develop that ACP for the 40 acres anyway? I'm trying to figure out where we are in that in yeah, order to help me. Not here. I understand that, but in order to help me vote on this, I need to understand what our financial risk on this really is. Is it a few thousand dollars? Is it $25,000? Is it more? Because if Robson's not willing to make a formal commitment to make their termination only if they don't get their approval, I'm not asking you to change. I want to know what our exposure here is. I don't want it to be a blank check that we're signing here that I don't know what that exposure is. Can I add that? Can I, can I ask the question? What happens if the district doesn't have, once I'm ready, the district doesn't have the approval yet? Because I'm not in control of the process. Then, then you're, again, asking, mm -hmm. you're asking me to contribute money to it, potentially. Eventually, that's where this is going to go. I, I, I'm not in control. All I'm saying is, right now, this is an asymmetrical agreement. It's not termination. The, the, the termination reasons are not mutual and symmetrical. I'm sure the agreement could be changed, which I'm not asking for it to be done, to make it more of a partnership, to make it more mutual and symmetrical in case things happen on both sides. 
But right now, all I'm trying to do is figure out what is our financial exposure on this for that 10 acres. So, Bob, um, it's obvious that we don't have that information in the room at the moment. Uh, Jim, can I, can I make a Yes, please. Comment? Um, maybe a couple comments. Um, uh, from my, my vantage point, this is a fantastic opportunity. Uh, it's as if uh, Carly and Jody between them found $2 million lying on the sidewalk and is bringing it into the district. Mm -hmm. um, this is fantastic for the housing supply in Scotts Valley. It is a fantastic way to steward sensitive sandals habitat, and it's a great way to help the district meet its obligations for land management. Mm -hmm. The um, it's unfortunate that Carly's not here. Uh, when I interviewed Carly uh, a week ago, asking her why she left, she said in part it was because of the toxic environments of these meetings and the disrespect shown by certain uh, participants. And, and that's really unfortunate. My hope is that we can be respectful to each other. The, um, and, and hopefully we won't lose any more staff uh, in relation to that issue. The specific um, language around, so Jody McGraw is Robson Holmes consultant working for Robson Holmes to develop an HCP for Robson Holmes. For the Valley Gardens. Oh, excuse me, for Valley Gardens. Uh, the, and because she is the Valley Gardens consultant, that's why she is listed in paragraph B as the one preparing the plan, the plan being the low effect habitat conservation plan for Valley Gardens. That's true, but I think she's also working for mm -hmm. the water district and their ACP too. She does practically everybody. She, she's yeah. doing both. Yeah. yeah. So what I would propose, and I don't believe it's explicit in this agreement, is that any and all work that might otherwise have been considered under the district's HCP, but is associated with this incremental 10 acres, be billed to Robs and Homes as, as part of your contract with Jody McGraw to develop the low effect habitat conservation plan because that low effect habitat conservation plan will need to speak to the 10 acres, its condition. In fact, it's that plan that will determine whether it's 10 or 10 and a half acres or whatever based on the ratios that uh, that plan negotiates with the Fish and Wildlife Service. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then uh, the only other costs that the district would incur would be staff and legal, as I understand it. And I guess my question to staff would be, would you expect staff and legal costs associated with this to exceed uh, $7,500 by if, if all of the consulting costs are borne by Robson? It might exceed it, but I, just skimming the staff report, I realized largely the lump sum of the money is to go into the maintenance of this. And so even the upfront cost, even the cost we are talking about, all the consultant fees are are pretty small compared. You know, I, I can't speak to exactly what we're talking about, but I, I don't think we're gonna staff the legal time is gonna be minimal while we're waiting for this all to congeal and and become a you know, come complete enough that we're we're now just in a maintenance situation, or that we're you know because there might be final consulting work done, but we would wait until after we have the full guaranteed the full amount of money. Mm -hmm. Is what I would assume. Is that so. So in this interim period, uh, it, it, do you anticipate? I, I, so is, is seven. seven $7,500 for, for I, I think it is important for the district not to subsidize the mitigation of a, of a, of a third party. 
right? And and so it is appropriate for us not to be uh, out of pocket. Um, Hmm. That's a good point. Um, and if I could interject also, I, I just asked Bob to wait. Okay. Um, I couldn't guarantee that we could stay within $7,500 of staff time and legal time. Um, I mean, if you were 8,000, you'd be easily at 20 hours of legal time, which may or may not. We may have already had that much time put into it at this point. Mm -hmm. um, I don't really have a, I don't have a solid answer for that other than, you know, I mean, if there is a way that we can word this and there's a way that we can keep this in bounds, I would say that staff would very much appreciate it. So um, that we're not, you know, that we can figure out a way that we can mitigate that. And I, I don't know how much, honestly, I don't know what our timelines are with our mitigation, because if we don't have to do anything with our mitigation until there's, till we have this all done, we're not really incurring any costs, it's just sort of there. Could do it all at once, basically. The, uh, so just to, um, so the, um, I, I work for a nonprofit organization. It's a land trust. We uh, have engaged in mitigation agreements. Uh, and when uh, consulting with a uh, counterparty who may need mitigation, uh, what we do is we require that our costs be covered. And um, in part, that's because we're a nonprofit, not wanting to subsidize development. But here we are, a special district, and we don't need to subsidize other people's uh, income generating business ventures either at the expense of, of ratepayers. Um, so while 7,500 uh, sounds like it may or may, it may cover the costs, it seems appropriate to have some provision to ensure that those real costs are actually covered. So um, I agree with you, Director. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Director Falls. I, I, so a couple of things. First of all, as a matter of good business practice, um, having the same person supporting both sides on the same project is not something we would do in the private sector. That would be called a conflict of interest, and there would either be a separate person or something else working on it because of the issue of who are you really working for and whose interests are you really managing. I, I, this can probably be reworded a bit to make it clear that if Jody McGraw needs to stay in there, that it has nothing to do with us. But I'm still concerned about the meta issue of the same person working both sides of the fence. Um, no offense to Jody. This is purely business and how you do business, at least in the private sector. Um, the second thing I want to say is I'm assuming that Robson Homes is going to need these additional 10 acres in order for them to get their final approval. Therefore, I'm assuming they are expecting the San Lorenzo Valley Water District not to sit on its hands, but to immediately start work after execution of this to obtain those additional 10 acres so that that's ready for them when they get their plan. If that's not the case, that they'll get everything approved subject to the contingency of these additional 10 acres. And then we can start work. That'd be great. That isn't, that isn't reflected in this agreement. Mm -hmm. And, you know, folks, contracts are not meant for when times are good. You know, I mean, I do a lot of contracts. Contracts are when things go bad. Contracts are for when things go bad. And having conversations about tough topics is neither toxic nor disrespectful. Mm -hmm. It is in fact the most respectful thing you can do during the course of trying to get to an agreement, which I think we all wanna to get to, which is they need something, we have something, there should be a way to get together on that. And to call it toxic or disrespectful is in fact itself toxic and disrespect, or disrespectful in my opinion. So I don't know if there's additional conversation that needs to go on here, but 
I don't know that we've yet fleshed this out to where everything is crystal clear with respect to who has what rights, what could possibly happen, what the expectations are for both parties relative to when work starts and how much money is being uh, covered. I agree with what Director Largay says about our costs need to be covered. We're not here to subsidize private development. Um, but I don't see any of that in the agreement today. So I would suggest that this, um, that we not vote on this at the moment and that it go back to staff for some additional negotiation with the props and homes. I don't think there's, none of this sounds no. No reasonable or overly difficult, but some of this needs to be reworded a bit. If, if I could, I would propose that we approve this measure with the uh, directive to staff to uh, adjust the terms in a manner that will ensure that's, that that's all fair. real costs yeah. are covered yeah. and we can get on with, with this. Um, I, it, work. Jeff, yes, Mark. Bob was asking a question earlier that Brian wasn't able to answer. Where are we on the HCP? Um, at the um, Engineering and Environmental Committee meeting in March, which I chair, um, Carly presented information about the HCP. Um, we were slated to start that in March and have it run through the end of this year uh, for plan preparation. Um, and then through all of next year for review by U.S. Forest Service of the plan. So by this information only, I'm looking, yes, it has started, but it's nowhere near complete at this point uh, for work on the HCP. So we're sure that that schedule is still on track. Um, I wouldn't expect that it's accelerated at all. So um, <laughs> I'm mostly worried about delay. I understand that. But if it's delayed, any monies that we've spent already, to your point, Bob, on that 40 acres, it's, not, it's easy enough. No, it's e any any money they spent on the 40 acres. If we Which have is delayed ours. it, it's not a. No, I get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Expanding it to 50 since the plan is nowhere near done. Yeah, because I mean, I'd like to keep the cost low for them too. Yes, agreed, right? agreed. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. Agreed. So, but uh, with Brian's suggestion of a provision for staff to include something to uh, cover for homes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Clarifying sure. point here is sure. we own the acreage. Yes, yeah. it's ours. Yeah, we're not owing and obtaining it. Out of the 180 acres at the Olympia watershed, right. 95 of them are sand hills habitat. Yeah. Six point. Three or six point seven is already six point three is already a conservation area. We're looking to to pad that. Right. But I I will say this: staff would really appreciate not sending this one back to the kitchen. We have a lot on our plate, and we have less staff to do it with. There's less cooks in the kitchen and less wait staff out, and, and we've got lots of tables that all need it. So if we can. Make a modification with the help of our legal staff who is online for that stuff. I would really appreciate it. Now, if we can do it in real time, I'm just concerned about the fact that last time we had a meeting with Robson, we threw a monkey wrench in yeah. during the meeting. I don't want to do that again. I don't want them to feel like we're mm -hmm. messing with them in a way that we're, is not intended. So there was, a, there was a proposal mm -hmm. from Brian, I believe, that we approve this with the contingency that staff do some additional negotiation on these issues. But at that point, it's not really approved because are you saying that that wouldn't come back to the board for final That's approval? That's what I'm saying. That's yeah. what his, that was yes. his proposal. Yeah. Yep. I, I mean, I think that is entirely I would, appropriate. I would trust staff. To, I mean, as long as we're saying that the, the final agreement has to be that it covers 100% of the district's costs mm -hmm. and that that's in here somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I mean, that's one of the outcomes that I had asked wow. for yeah. early on. Can I get a clarification? But I don't know if he's going to agree to it. Uh, Director Largay. 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 
suggested that we pay a proportionate share of those costs, which would be you know, 10 of 50, which is 20%. Right. I, I, and that's fine, but I'm also hearing that over here, 100% of the cost. 100% of the incremental. Okay. So right. whatever the increment, yes. so for example, I, 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 if, I, I, if we're almost done with getting the 40 acres approved, yes, and we have to go and restart the process for 10, then you got to pay for the whole 10. If we haven't started the 40 acres, then you would pay a proportion amount of the 50 that we're going to start. Yeah. Or if we're 90% of the way on 40, and all we need to do is change a few numbers. Okay. Um, so it sounds like we have some agreements here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That will work. Okay. Uh -oh. Christina, she congrats. No. <laughs> no, you, I mean, you guys are talking about so Well, first, let me ask this. Is the gentleman who is... Um, discussing this in the in the public arena, does he have authorization to negotiate and agree to this with you guys right now? He'd be the owner. <laughs> I, do own the guys okay. so I just want to make sure that, yeah, that okay. I don't know who's who's there and his representatives are, and I just want to make sure. Here, yes. The current issue is there's a liquidated liquidated damages provision in this agreement, mm -hmm. and there's actual several provisions that this change is going to affect that we have to negotiate how the agreement's going to go forward, and they're substantive enough that you you can't just entrust staff to negotiate that and not bring it back to you because your direction then becomes ambiguous. Yep. So the action wouldn't do any good. It won't, it legally, it, it doesn't stand because you have to give specific direction to staff. You can't give them ambiguous direction. Um, and because of the provisions that the changes that you're requesting or how they're going to affect this agreement, we really need to go back, renegotiate and bring back an agreement to the board that has everything changed and that Robson Homes has agreed to. Um, if if it's this cover the costs of staff, I also just want to mention that there's been a lot of discussion of what happens with delays. And I just want to point out because it hasn't been discussed that there is a provision that if there is a certain amount of delay, if you want to extend the closing date, the district will have to pay Robson Homes $25,000. That's if we choose to extend the closing date. If you have to, if you have to extend it because you haven't obtained the property, you haven't met all your obligations under the agreement. Clarification: uh, Under four A, it says may be extended by Robson Homes for additional twelve months in exchange for a payment of twenty five hundred. Is that twenty five thousand? Or excuse me, twenty five thousand. Is that us paying them or them paying us? I, well, again, it doesn't it doesn't I say both ways. I thought it was mutual. I, I don't see mutual. I don't see mutual either. I thought both parties that they didn't meet the deadline. Not according to what I'm looking at. Now, again, I may not have the the right draft of the contract. Right. So it looks to me like this needs some further negotiation, and I don't think we are in a position at the board to. Uh, offer up a motion which is specific enough to cover all these details. Uh, I uh, concur. So, um, yeah. un unless the rest of the board objects to this, I'm going to refer this back to staff to work with legal and cover these, you know, and and, and work with Robson to make sure these issues are covered. But I think we, I think it's really clear that. We're there's a deal here that can be done. The oh, both yes. parties yes. are like We're agreeing in concept here. We need to work through the details. Yeah, yeah. This is working through the details, and uh, uh, I don't see this as um, a deal stopper. It's just some working out some details. Yeah. Okay. Um, Christine, are, are we clear on what needs to be done to the contract? So what I have is that we want to ensure that the districts costs in relation to the 10 acres are covered by Robson Homes and that it's not being um, supplemented by the district. So a proportional share. And um, I'm not clear on where we landed with the consultant and whether that still need that change still needs to be made to the recitals on that she's going to prepare the HCP, yes. Um, she doesn't okay. need to necessarily. Um, she doesn't necessarily need to be on the agreement 
for them to use her as a consultant. So if there's no reason for it, we'll just leave her out. Is that correct? If I may offer, since you called on me, yes. uh, it says we'll be prepared by Jody McGraw Consulting for Robson Homes to address. And that way it makes it clear that she's not doing it for San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Because I read this and she was doing it for the San Lorenzo Valley Water District. Oh, she's doing it for them. She's doing it for them. We just need to add that clause. And then she can, I mean, again, I'm not a fan of third parties being part of a um, of an agreement. But with that clarification, I think it'd be okay. Okay. And then um, we need to negotiate um, a mutual extension provision. Sounds like it. Mm -hmm. And as far as um, the discussion regarding the termination not being mutual, um, we we can go back and negotiate that, but I will add in from a legal perspective, when I read this, uh, it, it seems to me that it is not mutual because Robson's, Robson Homes is taking a, a much larger risk if you terminate this agreement for any reason versus them because they're the ones that are putting in the development and putting in all the money on that. And so I just, I wouldn't be surprised if them or their, their legal counsel were to come back to me and say, there's no way this is going to be mutual because the risk is not mutual. Yeah. Yep. Yep. If I may comment for myself personally, if they cover our costs under whatever the is, I don't care what the termination clauses are personally. Yeah, yep, that they makes can, sense. They can be asymmetrical and it's right. fine. Right. So then we have also there's right. some, there some typos, change the 50 to 40 acres in right. Article C. Article C. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, and other than that, I think. Okay. And the I just want to make sure that we're before we right. leave the room and memories are fresh that we know if we have to direction. And the motion that you put in front of us here was right. not for 10 acres. It was for a $5.20 per square yeah. foot to pay. Thank you, I've already got okay. that. I already had it rewritten. Okay. So the thank you. Okay, right. so, okay. Negotiating contract terms in a public meeting is not easy. <laughs> thank you, Christine. You don't do it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, moving on. Um, uh, do we have any public comments here? Do we need a public? We don't. Comment? We don't Sorry. have a motion. Yeah, there's no motion. We don't have a motion. We don't have a motion. Right. You, you still have to take public comment on the item because it's agenda. Yes. Public comment. Any public comment on this item? Uh, seeing none. We will move on. Okay. Refresh my memory here. Page C? Yes. Page C. Can we have maybe a, I'm sorry, can we have a five minute recess? Could we have, take a five minute recess? Join my bathroom break. Yeah. Five minute recess. I don't want to miss the presentation. Sorry, guys, it sucks to get all the Breath of air.
and I believe we're on 8C. We are. Rack and Gray and Forest Springs Consolidation Phase 1 Pipeline Project. Um, so I wanted to point out the whole picture here a little bit and zoom out. Rack and Gray, 24 connections, four springs, 124 connections. We signed an LOI to consolidate these two new tools. And Rack and Gray mentioned they have some FEMA money to do some of this work up here. Yep, most of it. The district received a grant for $3.2 million, of which we have $700,000 spent on design. We have about $2.5 million left of that. And that was originally the thought was, oh, we're going to do all of this. And we found out not really, it's more like $12 million. Um, yeah. yeah, it was. Excuse me, I'm going to get my other notes here. Anyway, the point is yes, it's short for what. Um, Twelve 12.8. 12.8. Either way, it falls very short. When I came on board, I said, okay, but. We're going to spend this grant money. I'm not in the habit of giving money back to the state. Let's do something with it. Let's get the football down the field, get the ball down the court a little bit. Let's do something with it. This pipeline here runs to district, pretty much district territory, as does mostly this one. But when we got quotes back, when you look at soft costs where we take a project cost, so if we get an engineer's estimate for a million dollars, to be responsible as staff and engineering, you know that it's like at least 30% more than that to cover a little bit of contingency, to cover all your engineering oversight, inspections, labor compliance, we call them just the soft costs on top of it. So, all in, this is about 3.9 million to do just this yellow section here. It doesn't, it doesn't get us full consolidation, but it gets, gets us a big trunk line nearly built. And the thing is, operationally, to point out is Right now we have woefully undersized lines here for fire flow, particularly, which is now what's the driver for all of our flow. It's not residential, it's your fire flow. Um, upsizing all this and bringing it up to speed because we wouldn't be able to adequately service these two mutuals. We didn't have the upsized lines. In other words, you have to start at the trunk and then branch off. Um, Okay, so if I could, Scott, if you wouldn't mind, go ahead and uh, go to the next slide. So thank you. So this is what we're calling phase one. It's just that yellow piece, the line green on this drawing. You get the idea. But I think really what this comes down to is we want to work towards, we do have an obligation to work in good faith on the LOIs we sign with these two nutrients. So doing something and taking this grant money and spending it, but as I mentioned, it's 3.9 million, we have 2.5. The other thing about this line though, is this is the work that we would do. Anyway, to upgrade our own system. As it was mentioned before, it's like, well, would we do it if it weren't for this? Well, the answer is actually, we did sign an LOI saying we would consolidate with these folks. So my answer as a staff person committing to the Forest Springs and communities of Forest Springs and Rock Rays, yes, we never adjusted our capital improvement project list at that time, 
But now that we're doing it, and now that we're looking for funding, yes, we should fund it now because we are, we have committed to consolidating with these folks. And as I'm saying, it is funding our, it is in part funding our infrastructure. The diameter of the pipe, kind of a moot point because the DWR is paying for it. But what it turns out is, is that basically, you do the math for $1.4 million, which is what's the ask, is for more than half of our infrastructure is getting paid for by the grant. We're showing, demonstrating that we can implement grant money to the state. We won't have to pay grant money back to the state, more importantly. We won't have to pay back the part that we've spent and we won't lose the 2.5 million that we have sitting out there that we could spend. Regardless of what we do and how the funds go, there's certain pieces of this that the DWR is not going to fund. So no matter what, we have to reach into our pocket. All the hydrants, all the connections along the way that are district connections, they're not going to pay for it. They've also mentioned some other stuff, but we're still arguing with them. We'll still have a little bit of an arm wrestle going there. But the, the point is, is that we're going to have to spend a little bit of our own money, but it's money we're spending on ourselves. It is upgrading our system, and it is part of this. It also is advancing the consolidation. So what I mentioned this piece. Um, so it's a, as I mentioned, it's, it makes good on our commitment to the LOI demonstrates that we can effectively utilize and implement state grant funds, avoids the losses, et cetera. Um, what it doesn't do is it's not, when I underline this, we're not spending ratepayer money on the consolidation. It is getting money that we get to spend on ourselves too. We're basically getting our infrastructure upgraded for less than half the price along the way. It is also serving consolidation, but it helps us as well. And we would have to build this regardless. Um, and I think I've mentioned the rest here. So staff feels that with the debt issuance that we're looking at, we are also in, in parallel to the debt issuance that we're looking at to, that we're going to bring in August is we're also preparing a revised list of the capital improvement projects. We want to, we're saying we put this on there with that we are earmarking debt, you know, debt funding to cover this cost. So we're putting it on their project list and saying, yes, we're going to use debt funding to cover the cost. Erroneously, when we presented this back in May, so we did say we were going to use um, we were going to use reserves and digging into that. That was obviously it was an oversight on my part to not talk to finance as well as I should have and dig into it and realize that would not have worked. We don't have sufficient reserves. But to prioritize this project, I think, in the interest of also helping these mutuals, as some folks mentioned, they're high. They're Houses literally burn down if you drive through those areas. They're still impacted. Um, a lot of them still can't develop and rebuild their property without putting a water tank on their on their property for their own fire protection. The county is putting a lot of requirements on them. Um, I just I want to kind of bring it home for us to make make us realize. On the one hand, we are helping our community. Another point I do want to say is that's not to say that I'm not going to go to the state and every time I get a chance. In fact, I was going to do it at another opportunity, but I was told to wait. Is the state wants us to consolidate. The state wants us to do this. What they're short on is handing out the bucks. And that, that is what makes it problematic for all of us is that no, we can't spend repair. And in this situation, we're saying, okay, let's divert some of funds and yes, use them now. 
We're not paying, you know, we're not spending ratepayer money, but ideally, yes, the state and the feds and all those folks need to pony up. And trust me, um, I'm a fighter for this kind of stuff, and I'm not afraid to speak my mind, as some may know. Um, and I'm not afraid to ask the state. It's like, hey, you want us to consolidate? Then put your money where you melt. In this situation, I am asking, we move the ball down the road. We don't lose our ground. There's still more conversations to come. We got congressionally directed funding for another million dollars. Brackenbury has money for their, their piece. So it's filling in the pieces of the puzzle right now. But I certainly, it's like, do I have the grand vision of how to get it all the way done? No, but I know this isn't the first time, this isn't my first rodeo for doing something where it's like, yeah, I don't see the end of the tunnel, but I'm not afraid to go into it and start putting the pieces together because I know as long as we can get the money, we can do it. We can do it. Thanks. So, questions for staff? Questions yes, for staff. No, oh, yeah. we do. Well, no, Mark can go first. Mark, um, you mind? Are fairly simple. Um, when we talked about this on May 2nd, uh, we made two requests on this aspect to staff. Uh, get the contractor estimate, which I believe you're, or I would hope you're in the process of uh, getting a bid for this portion of it from contractors. Yes? Oh, you got say, sorry, that's the end of the question. We got, that is we got an engineer's estimate. No, no, no. We, contractor's estimate is what we're asking for. We did not take it out to bid because we don't have we didn't have the way to fund it. And we take it out to bid without the funding, it's a little bit like crying wolf if we couldn't fund it, if you turned around and didn't fund it. So okay. I wanted to bring this back to you. We have, the timing of it is still that we wouldn't are just becoming ready to have it ready to go out to bid because we reshuffled the plans. What staff would like to have is have the money so that we can build it. Because if we go to MPE and Granite and so on and so forth, all these different entities, and they bid on something, it's like, oh, you didn't, you didn't ever even have the money. Wouldn't play well. It wouldn't play well in our long game of relationships with those folks. Okay, um, that's not what I believe we heard at the last meeting based on our request to get contractor's estimate. So, okay, um, but that was two months ago. The second aspect that we asked for was convene a work study session so that we could have the discussion that we had for almost the first hour here about what we're trying to do with this and what, and have it in a more open session rather than at a formal board meeting. Um, We've seen no movement on that that I'm aware of. So what's your plan for that, Brian? Well, I would say that there are certain negotiations and certain dialogue that is happening and is occurring. And as these items are ready to flush out, I mean, I'm happy to give a report of where everything stands because there's a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that that's different than the uh, having a a working session where not only the board but the public could also uh, offer input on where we are on this. So, what's I'm a little I, I guess my caution is just that I know a lot of what staff does. It's mm -hmm. tedious, and a lot of this comes down to getting agreements together, which we have legal working on mm -hmm. at the moment. There's information that needs to change hands. And it's putting all this together so that I have something cohesive to bring back. My 
general philosophy is bringing you something that's tangible, that's a decision for the board to make. And honestly, I, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit at a loss to see the benefit of bringing too much of this into the public when really it's staff level, making the sausage, if you will, and then bringing it back when there's a decision to be made. For instance, we've already decided that we're gonna do interim agreements, um, you know, another set of interim agreements. But I guess I, I'm gonna pause here because I also know um, Brown Attic, et cetera, this is out of the scope of what we're asking you at this time. I'm happy to bring back the next phase of this and I'm happy to bring back a report on it or where everything stands so that you can ask questions and we can comment on it. Um, I'm not looking for, in my opinion, I am not. I don't think we're looking for something that's fully baked, that you're ready to take to the board to get our vote on. We're asking for something uh, one or two steps back from that to, to to begin to ask all the appropriate questions so that you and staff can go back with that. But that's not the feel that I'm getting at this point. You are trying to bring something a lot more. Well, I'm happy to bring an information item that you can comment on. Mm -hmm. There's all the, you'll have all the information that we know, I mean, there's a little bit more to this, but really okay. at this point, not much. So it's a little bit more, I mean, but I'm happy to bring the information item. We can discuss it in the board or or we can have a, a study session. I, you know, it's also something, a topic for committee level, but we brought it to the committee actually the same item. Uh, I don't have any, uh, formal questions other than those comments on this agenda item at this point. So, uh, I'll let it proceed then. Brian? Uh, I, I'm uh, comfortable with this uh, item. I recognize that what we are facing is in the big picture per the staff report, a $12.8 million series of projects here that far exceeds the district's grant funds and those obtained by Bracken Gray. And we have the opportunity to make incremental progress towards meeting the needs of our neighbors and delivering for existing ratepayers, fire hydrants and improved uh, uh, pipes running down the streets of the, of the district. Um, the largest question seems to be how to execute that larger project. But in, in the meantime, let's do what we can to make incremental progress. I don't have a further question. Hello? I, I continue to be astounded by the fact that staff is unwilling to engage with, in any substantive fashion, with community members, particularly those that have substantial funds at risk. Um, I, this is a small community agency. We're not a big, you know, city or state or what have you. This is really where the grassroots are. And working with community members is absolutely part of the job description, if it's not, it should be the job description of staff. And that may be engaging in conversations where, you know, we don't know everything yet. And part of what we're trying to do is have that study session to reason together, to ask questions, to find out if there's something we're not aware of, uh, so that we can go off perhaps and, and have a something to come back to take action on. The board's role here is not simply to make decisions. It is also to craft policy. And part of crafting policy is sometimes engaging with the community in substantive fashion. I'm sorry if that's not comfortable, but that's part of what our job is all about to do. Um, with respect to this particular project, what does the, our agreement, if, if we have an agreement with DWR say as what our end result is supposed to be when we have spent all of their money? 
where do we have an agreement with DWR? Yes. And Could I see that agreement with DWR? Does somebody have that that I can look at to see what is it that we're supposed to deliver at the end of this process? President, can you please ask the director, did you ask a question? You have to give me a chance to answer. Thank you. Can you ask the question, please so, please so please answer. Please answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have an agreement with the DWR? And I thought that that agreement, I thought that that would have been presented when we accepted the grant. That's normally how my process would have worked. I don't, it's not a secret. Well, I do want to point out, it's like, I don't, you know, I'm not resisting uh, a meeting. It's just that I- Thank you for answering my question. I didn't ask anything further about my comment. Thank you for answering the question. So it is my job to go back in time and because of the way we organize our agendas to find it. Okay, what is, you still didn't answer the question, what is the our agreement with the DWR with what the final result is supposed to be when we have expended all the funds? So that is, um, we are, in fact, we work with the DWR very closely. We have many meetings with them. We go over the scope. They're okay with the revised scope. They've come back with comments and what we presented so far. So that design that we have, that green line you saw, we have the full designs of that. They've reviewed that. They've come back with comments and saying what they'll pay for, what they won't, but they're okay. And they recognize that we're not gonna get the whole enchilada here. They recognize that we're only gonna get part of the way. And they are saying, yes, they are also willing to extend is scheduled to accommodate us right now verbally they've told us july but they may even go as far as september so that we can actually get this built but if we delay too much we won't get it built we won't get it built with in time because we're yeah have they committed in writing to the following we will not achieve consolidation of either of these mutuals and the pipe will end at wherever it is, uh, West Park and um, uh, Ridge. Have they agreed to that in writing so that there are no comebacks? They haven't, as far as I know, it's not in writing, but there's a point in grant negotiations where I'm comfortable moving this forward, funding it, and getting the funds based on the relationship we have. And we have frequent meetings. When we get assurances that yes, they're okay with it, I'm, I'm reassured. I wouldn't be bringing this to you if I wasn't sure. For instance, that's why I didn't want to put it out to bid because I didn't have money. You hadn't approved any money. And it's like, it was irresponsible for me to put it out to bid. Without Thank you for answering the question. Um, I want to go on to my next question. Uh, you, you, you watch, you've asked about four questions. Hang, hang on a sec. I want an answer to the question and that's it. No more, no less. No filibustering on any other topic. I'll get to the next question. Okay. And you don't okay. filibuster? I'm, Gentlemen. So, I am very much driven by contracts and language because when things go sideways, that is where the contracts become important. If we do not have an explicit written agreement with a DWR at this point in time, where they acknowledge in writing that we are not achieving consolidation, we are exposed. They could very well come back to us and say, hey, you agreed to this, you spend your money. And that would go against the policy that I have, which is existing customer money is not to be spent to consolidate these mutuals. Okay, so, so let when me, will we have that agreement? Let, let me ask you a question. Is there an agreement with the DWR that says we are consolidating with them? Because yes. Bob is implying that we have a, a signed agreement that says we're consolidating with them. We have a, an agreement with the DWR. I don't have the exact wording, but we... We have a certain amount of latitude to how, in that agreement, how we spend that money. I'm comfortable with that. I've reviewed it. I've reviewed it 
Carly, who got the grant, they ask these questions. Mm -hmm. The other piece is, is, remember, what I'm asking to do here is that we, you're saying to fund it. If I have the funding, I'm comfortable going out to bid. Once I have the bids, I can go back to the DWR and say, okay, here's what it's really going to cost us. And we're next step of the road. And we get some kind of assurance from them at that point that we're okay moving ahead. What? So that's the point. That's, in other words, staff isn't going through this willy nilly. There's a process, but if we don't fund, we won't bid. If we don't bid, we're not gonna go back to the DWR and have anything concrete that we can say, okay, here's how we're getting to the finish line. So what is the exact language in the agreement with DWR that says we're supposed to accomplish with this money? Can someone please answer that? I, I think Nicole might be able to answer it. Yeah, I've never uh, seen the agreement, well, so. Don't do this to me, Bob. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. Gentlemen. So we're being asked to vote on something that could potentially expose our ratepayers to significant financial uh, obligations. Effectively, the blank check that we talked about earlier, and I'm, I'll get to that in a minute with respect to this particular topic, because we're not actually being explicit and bringing that information to, to the board so we can review exactly what it is we signed up for and exactly what we have to deliver to the DWR. I, I am not comforted by hand waving and, oh, I got a wink and a nod and we that sort of thing. Yes, I agree. I understand. Thank you. So let me yeah. point out something. I'm not asking you to spend the money. I'm asking you to say you will allocate the budget. Right. When it comes down to awarding an actual bid, that's when you're going to be spending money, when we award a bid. That's two, three months down the road. If we don't start now, if we don't start now. You want to fucking mock me, you fucking ass? Hey. Calm down. <laughs> Uh, we, we know your position. My, my, yes, my, my next question. We had in 2021, I believe with ACL, a $75 million CIP that had specific projects that we were going yes. to work on. And that is our CIP. Which projects on that are being removed and replaced with so, us? So we obviously don't have that answer right at the moment okay. off the top of our heads. Fair enough. So really we we're don't have here. any answers about this. We are, from my point of view, we are going into this as a blank check. I uh, want to, uh, cons I want to consolidate with these people. Yes, we're not making any progress getting there. Can we? Other uh, comments from the board? Uh, no comments. I, I uh, would like to make a motion. Yes, I move to approve the proposal as written. Do we have a second? Um, are we okay with the motion that way, or do we need to? Um, I'll read it. I'll make the motion instead, if that's okay, Brian. Uh, fine with me. Uh, uh, that the board directs the interim general manager to fund the construction of the Brackenbrae and Four Springs Consolidation Pipeline Project using a combination of the remaining grant money from the Department of Water Resources Small Community Grant relief program and debt financing. Okay, we have a second. Second. Okay, take a vote, President Hill. Wait, uh, I'm sorry, we, we didn't do public, public comment. Yes, public, uh, public comments, sorry. please. Um, so the, the work plan, Exhibit A in the agreement, the grant agreement that was worked out with um, San Jose Valley and Department of Water Resources the purpose of this project is to provide safe, reliable water supply to two small water, water mutual companies through consolidation with the grantee water system. And then it goes on to say Forest Springs and Brackenbrae. The two small um, unincorporated communities lie in the grant 
T's um, sphere of influence, which currently serves a population of 26,000. The water service agreement between the grantee and the two small water mutual companies um, will be developed. So in the, um, in the information um, provided, um, there was supposed to be a deliverable of a water agreement. That water agreement was um, drafted up by Gina, the previous um, lawyer, and then reviewed by the current. What was missing was the exhibits. That was happening in September and October. Um, what I want to speak on in regards to this motion is that there, there were meetings. There were very productive meetings between um, Forest Springs, Brackenbury, Sandus, and SLV, and SLV was leading it. Mm -hmm. um, it was it's a, it's sad that Josh passed away. Um, that kind of stalled things. Garrett has tried his best to step in, but those discussions have ended. And so the goal of this money is a drought fund to consolidate small water companies. Mm -hmm. It has been my experience being in this community for over 20 years that the state who has um, oversight in Brack and Gray and Forest Springs has pushed this towards consolidation. And we were able to function until the fire, okay? We went out and got the money. What I wanted to discuss tonight in regards to this item was that um, I was able to get from Sandus a revised estimate. And I don't know what's appropriate or not. These are handwritten. I wanted you guys to see. I have a copy for each of you. I have a copy of their estimate that I got today revised. There's some mistakes on it. I tried to get Sandus to correct it, but I have adjusted it um, just based off the of linear footage and the number of fire hydrants. But based off of um, trying to phase this out, so what should be clarified, which is not up here, is um, when when Brian was speaking about the um, main line, the main spine was going to be the Department of Water Resources. And then we're going to use the, that would have covered 19 of our connections. And then the remaining fund, FEMA, was going to pick up five. We understand. We clearly acknowledge there's a $12 million shortfall. We're willing to shift the FEMA money towards the 19. When you look at this adjustment, we're $700,000 short. Well, guess what? In the original application, 700,000 was allocated for the purposes of Bracken Bray's infrastructure within Bracken Bray. We're not trying to take money from Forest Springs. That money's being put into the yellow line that um, staff is recommending. We're just asking San Lorenzo to have a high elevation. We have dead end streets. When we go to put in the FEMA infrastructure, which will be a slightly short. We don't want to have construction come back over work that's been completed and restored. Um, so we have phased it out and we just want to discuss it with you. We want to show you how this makes sense. So available funds with the obligated FEMA funds, with the potential for us to go out to get a block grant, which we have to have an approved scope of work for FEMA. In order to get this approved scope of FEMA, we have to work with SLB staff, which can't seem to happen. And then we we wanted to request 700000 of the DWR grant that SLB went out with in the fall of 2021 with the intent to consolidate two systems. Four Springs has gotten the full focus of the staff to go get a grant submitted for state revolving funds for design of the rest of their system. We keep on bringing up the $65,000 that Brack and Gray owes. Number one, we haven't been invoiced for it, but it, it, it's three different ad services. Um, one is. Can, can I interrupt for just a second yeah. here? I'm out of time. It, you're out of time, but I want to say that this is a perfect example of why we need to have a study session because having you recite a long list of things like this that most of us have not seen or heard before exactly in, you know, in that format, it's very difficult to digest that and decide what needs to be done. And I th do think we need to have a get together um, where we all have our presentations and we discuss them and we figure out what we can and what we can't do, because it's obvious to me that some of the things you'd like, we just can't do because there isn't the money. And so... But there is, excuse me, there is money. It's a question of where you prioritize it. Well, By putting the, question, the, money, and the question is how much money? Yeah, but if you put the money from the Department of Water Resources towards its intent, you're going to consolidate um, rack and rain because enough okay. water... So, so I, I just ask you, can we please have a delay this for one week so we can actually have this conversation and you agendize it and make the decision next week. At least just hear us out. 
because that's not what's been happening. Eight months we've been stalled and we're stalled for our FEMA money. We're gonna lose it. We need to have an agreement with SLD. You are the lead agency. I can't provide questions to the state of California, the governor's office, nor mm -hmm. FEMA without your help. And I, I can't do it waiting for some type of meeting to happen. Okay. Thank so you. I have a priority here that the staff does need to somehow find a way to schedule a meeting with them where we can lay all the cards on the table. Mr. Fultz. I am deeply concerned about the implications of what happens if we can't provide support to Bracken Bray and they lose their money. I, I, that, that is just an unacceptable I, I understand that. Uh, outcome. And if I were Bracken Bray, I, yeah, that, that would be something that would probably take them right over the edge. Um, Let's have that meeting next week. I'm perfectly happy to schedule a, a special, a, spe, a real special meeting well, with a single topic to have that conversation. Do we want to do a meeting or a study session? Oh, excuse me, study session. Okay, so. So we have a motion and a second, I believe. We do. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, as a point of discussion prior to the vote, I would just say that my understanding is that the single best thing we can do to move this consolidation forward is to approve this agenda item uh, as proposed and begin the process of building these pipelines and ensuring that the grant funds are not lost. Um, so I look forward to, uh, to that vote. I think we have an additional public comment. She's been having her hand raised, I think. Yeah. Just a second here. Another one who's yeah. uh, Mr. Johnson. There, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Bo Jensen. I'm a resident in Brackenbrae. I sat through these meetings before. I've heard about the special study session that don't have sessions that don't happen. I just want to say that I do appreciate San Lorenzo Valley Water District commitment to consolidation and contributing their own funds to upgrade the existing undersized main lines. Brackenbury has also worked hard to secure FEMA funding to repair infrastructure impacted by the 2020 EZU fire. The consolidation design was a collaborative effort between the water district staff and Sandus with monthly check-ins with Forest Springs and Brackenbray until October of 23. Brackenbray, we acknowledge the project is over budget. And the project, the project needs to be phased. But Bracken, between Brackenbray, FEMA grant, and original DWR earmarked funds for Brackenbray infrastructure there would be enough funding for bracket consolidation within the phase one. Please, I'm asking the board to please support Bracken Bray's consolidation by using the DWR grant as originally intended. Thank you. Thank you for your remarks. Um, I still see a, set, a hand up for Karen Vitale, but that's been up for quite a while. Um, Right. I'm I'm still, uh, yeah, I wanted to comment on this. I had previously uh, wanted to say that I had the agreement sitting in front of me and I could read it to you earlier in this discussion. But um, at this point, I think it's more important to comment on the, the, the motion that's in place. Um, we are in the difficult crossroads of a he said, she said conversation of what the intent of this agreement actually was and whether funds were earmarked and whether changes of scope occurred and who gets the money and who gets to sit on the sidelines. And I think what's really critical here is that we move this forward in a way that serves the bigger community. And, and somehow in all of that, Bracken Bray's FEMA funding is preserved as well. What I see is, feels like kicking the can down the road again. We've had numerous design discussions along the way. We understand that sometimes the best compromise is to get started. 
And uh, to use the cliche that a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. If we do not start taking steps, this journey will never happen. And I think that we need to get going on this project and make it happen. Um, that's really the extent of it. I don't see how we can resolve this in further study sessions, sessions where we discuss what the original intent is versus a document I have sitting in front of me from March of last year that has a scope in it that doesn't seem to appear to my reading have any discussion of $700,000 earmarked to Brackenbrae. So here we go with he said, she said. And it's very unfortunate, and it's a very difficult thing to unravel. We have to get started. It doesn't, it can't be perfect. We just have to get going. That is the um, the end of my comment. Thank you. James Furtado, a public member of SLVWD and also an employee. Mm -hmm. I have worked diligently on this project for a long time. And as the sir said in the comment before that, Everything stopped in October. Nothing's been done because the questions aren't asked to the right staff, and there's a problem here. Things should have been moved way forward by now, and the actions that I just saw towards the board absolutely uncalled for, and that's how staffs treated. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Bob? I'm unclear what I think it's very clear this is going to pass. I'm unclear what that means for Brackenbrae's 1.25 million and what they should be doing with it before they lose it. I don't think any of us know that at this point. Well, I think it's bloody well incumbent upon us to answer that like yesterday because if they lose that money because of perceived inaction on our part, I don't want to, I don't want to go there. That's not a place we want to go. Thank you. Yes. Um, as the VP of Brack and Gray, I would just like to ask uh, the board to relay the decision um, of the DWR allocation um, just to reconsider the consolidation strategy by weighing out what can be accomplished by a frack bay FEMA funding. Um, the intent of DWR application was to consolidate two water mutual, we can accomplish one. Um, I ask that we definitely schedule a meeting um, as proposed, the study meeting, however you want to phrase it, uh, just to meet with anything, if you can vote today to get us moving along, even better. Whatever you guys need to do, we just need to move this forward. Thank you. My name, my name is Matt Dunstan. I live in Brack Ray. And I just want to second what uh, Sarah had said uh, about delaying this decision. Uh, the PWR agreement uh, isn't really being followed as it was originally intended. Um, I, I think there may be other uh, avenues that we could take to do this, get this further down the road. And this, this is a little off base because I know we've already done the design phase, but just want to comment by son in law puts in water mains for Santa, the city of Santa Clara, and they just put in eight, eight inch mains down the middle of the streets in the residence, residential blocks. They step out for the, the, the meters and the, uh, the laterals or whatever you call it, and they bury it and they just go straight along. And I, I don't know why we couldn't just run an eight inch right up the middle of 236 four steps of Pratt and Bray and Fort Springs. People with that then. It just seems like it would be simple, easy. It's completely accomplishes what the goal of the grant was. No extra stuff, extra detours this way and that way. I know that's a little off base because we paid a lot of money for those plans, but uh, I think we should delay and think it through a little bit more before that's all Thank you. Thank you.
And we have another speaker here. Real quick, uh, Stephen Key uh, from Forest Springs again. Uh, lost my home from the fires. Um, it, I would encourage you to move forward in some capacity. I think mean, continually to be <laughs> is, is um, just seems like the problem that we have. We need to stop moving forward, or now we're talking about delaying further. So um, I think you have two things to do is to approve some movement forward as as was, as was uh, uh, outlined by the general manager and then further have further study uh, that involves the community. Thank you. What are you what, what are you doing right now? So we also have point of order. Yes. Um, if you could please um, make sure the audience is right. not addressing right. anybody but us. Yes, please. Mr. Furtado, at, at, the, at, the, at, at, the, at the appropriate time, please. Right. It's her turn to speak, please. I just, I just want to make a quick thing. I, um, I'm not, we're Brack and Bray is not asking for this to be delayed super long. We're just asking for a week. Can we just have a meeting next week with this item agenda on it? Have the full conversation. The scope of work is in DWR under review right now. It has not been decided. It's been under review to show progress. And so they're open to the extension. And I don't know what, um, because there's no discussions exactly what they're not going to pay for. But I think that there is a, a case to be discussed. And um, I just think that we need to have that discussion before you make this decision. Can we not have the meeting that's been promised for four months to give you the information to make the decision next week? Um, you know, whether you don't go another 100 yards, it's not going to make any difference to SLV. But if you help complete the consolidation in Bracco Bray, it just deals with that whole system. So we're dead ends. We don't loop. The way the construction is, it's most efficient to do it all together. So I, I implore you just to delay this a week and make it a priority to have this meeting with just one item to get to the right decision. And, and the other thing about it, I know it was more than one sentence, our FEMA money needs a decision too. So it's not that we want the DWR to delay. We are in the same boat, but even sooner. If we don't show progress, we will lose the FEMA money. They're in conversation with DWR because they're holding all the cards. We can't even present the cards to the government. And our FEMA money has to be extended next, next month. So we want progress. Can we have a meeting next week? I will explore having a meeting next week. There's another conversation. But I can't promise it. I do not know what everyone's schedule is, but I will explore it. Okay, we have a comment here from DG. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, uh, my name is uh, Donato Garcia. Uh, I've been living in uh, Four Springs now for two years, going on three. Um, I, I know we ended up getting some plans from Sanders, and I just hoping that I haven't been in this whole meeting. Um, I'm, I was just hoping that we're going to be sticking to plan. Uh, and I, I agree with them. Uh, we should have a meeting sooner than later. Uh, the longer we wait, less uh, less chances of us actually keeping our money. Um, I, I'm just curious, too, on why did everything abruptly stopped on October? Um, progress was going uh, reasonably good and then from there it just suddenly just came to a complete stop so it's a little worrisome um i especially the on the way certain individuals conducted themselves i i hope we're here in business and not letting our emotions take over um i just want to make sure that this keeps on you know moving forward for everybody for all the communities in boulder creek uh, that's pretty much it. Thank you very much. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Um, Brian, would you reread your motion? I, I don't believe it was my motion. Oh, I, I, I read it. Yes. It's, it's as worded in the memo to us. Fund the construction of Four Springs and Brackenbrake Consolidation Phase 1 
pipeline project using a combination of the remaining grant money from Department of Water Resources, Small Community Drought Relief Program, and debt financing. Okay. Do we have a second? I will second. Ryan said Okay, so President Hill. Yes. Uh, Director Fultz? No. Director Smalley? Yes. Director Largate? Yes. Passes. Okay, moving on. Nine A surplus policy equipment and supplies. Well, uh, okay, yep. Is there a staff presentation on nine A? Yes, may I begin? Hello, good evening, board. Heather I. Paletti, um, consultant with RGS. The action before you tonight is to adopt a resolution approving the proposed surplus and equipment policy. On September 17th, 2020, the board adopted a policy for the disposal of surplus real property. However, that policy does not apply to the surplus of supplies and equipment. The plan was to develop a policy that prioritizes obtaining the highest value for the property. The proposed policy has checks and bal balances requiring the approval of the general manager or his designee. The policy also provides options for disposal with reuse being the first option considered. One option for sales used by many other government agencies is an online auction, specifically gov deals. This method method typically ensures fair market value is received for the item with low overhead. For clarification, to eliminate a conflict of interest, employees are not able to claim items designated for recycle, salvage, or reuse. They may buy items for personal use only through the public auctions. On June 12th, the Budget and Finance Committee voted unanimously, recommended approval of the policy to the board. That concludes my presentation, and I'm here for questions. Okay, so this was um, presented to the Budget and Finance Committee, and we did approve did approve this. Yeah. I just want to add we we only have I mean Heather did make maybe made this point, but I want to add that we did we didn't have a surplus policy, and typically in government. It's pretty strict. Um, you can't even take a pencil out of the rubbish bin normally. It's considered, you have to have a disposal policy. Once something goes into the rubbish bin, even employees aren't allowed to salvage it. And so we didn't have a policy. I'm used to having one. At least that we have some orderly way that we look at disposing of surplus property that we Try to get as much as we can out of it without going crazy, but be able to basically dispose of items that we have. Like we had a, I don't know, an envelope stamp machine that was Pitney Bowes is actually buys them back. So we found that out. Um, but we were taking our meters and uh, scrapping them when it's like, hmm, well, do those have a higher value? And that was the idea where it's like, okay, we need a policy around this. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from the board? No. I don't have any questions on this. It makes sense to me. So, yeah, I mean, you know, definitely making sure we get value out of things. And it's great to bring that to the board. Um, my only concern is the level of effort involved in, in doing this. Let's just keep it to an absolute minimum because as has been stated earlier, there's not a lot of staff time for, uh, for excess stuff. Yep. Comments from the public on this? And I'll make the motion that the board adopt a resolution approving the surplus supplies and equipment policy as provided in this memo. I will second that. Okay. 
Can you already ask for public comments on my vote? Yes, yes, I already asked for public President Hill? Yes. Director Bolts? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Director Largay? Yes. All right. Unanimous it passes. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Okay. I had previously pulled the board officer nomination. We are down to the consent agenda. Um, yes, I will be pulling uh, 10A, 10B, 10C, 10D, 10E. And I guess quarterly status reports are part of consent now. So 10H. Yep, that's it. Earlier, you did say you wanted to pull uh, 10F. Um, you still want to yeah, thank you for, yeah, I did have a, a couple of questions about that. Yeah, thank you for reminding me. Yep, so A, B, C, B, E, F, and H. Okay. And you wish to then discuss those individually? I have some, yeah, I mean, I have some questions or comments or what have you in each one of them, and, you know, there we go. Okay, before we uh, proceed, uh, Mr. Holloway wishes to make a comment. Well, I would like to address G, H, I, and J. Uh, and I and J, I think it goes better. Is, uh, is, 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 uh, either that or I'll pull G, H, and I as well. Uh, Christina, are you still on the line? Yes. Christina, can you just make the comments so that we can just vote on them collectively? Who are you referring to now? Are you referring to Director Fultz or the public? The public. Can we just take public comment and then vote on the remaining items? Yeah, he, he can, the public can comment on any of the items there before we poll um, and vote. So he's welcome to comment. Oh, yeah, well, I, I want to address G, H, I, and J, and I think it will take more than three minutes. Go ahead. Well, I guess others have taken more than three minutes uh, repeatedly. I, I said go ahead. Um, so on the Karen Correct, uh, I did not attend that meeting on May 2nd, but I watched it on video, and it could be part of a Primac blooper reel. Um, I've probably been to, I know I've been to more than 100 public meetings, not just this district, but throughout this county. And um, I can only think of one time that I saw an item added to an agenda. Uh, it seems to me that any board member who was a critical thinker would would think, um, why do we why do we need to publish agendas 24 hours in advance or 72 hours in advance if we can add an item at the drop of a hat? So I I would have expected at least one board member to be a little bit curious about the item being added. Um, I, I think your lawyer is probably making more money dealing with the Karen Correct than if she had actually done what she should have done in the first place, which was stop you before you added the item. Um, so it seems to me that there were five board members, three staff members, all three staff members getting paid who ought to know what you need to do to add an item. And so I'm certainly including the district secretary, the general manager, and the district council should have all understood this better. Um, also, I think Jim Mosher should have understood better because he is a retired attorney and he used to be on a public board. So I'm surprised that he didn't understand. In fact, I think maybe Holly Hossett might have been the only one in the room who knew that what you were doing violated the Brown Act. Um, the quarterly state, I'm, I'm just going to go on to the next ones, I guess. The quarterly status reports. Um, I only really want to address the financial report. On page 356, 
there's some kind of analysis, some kind of revenue. I can't, I don't have my, you know, I, I can't see it right now. But um, some kind of a, I believe that that revenue calculation on page 356 is uh, no longer necessary. I think that the reason the district was doing that was because of the 27, it was part of the 2017 rate plan, which was superseded by the 2024 rate plan. And so I think it's no longer necessary to do those calculations. Um, and then on page 372, there's, uh, it shows the, the status of the two big loans as of uh, April 30th. But um, I was here yesterday and the meeting never took place, but there was some kind of financial consultant here. And he told me that he had heard that all of the debt had been spent by June 30th. Um, so I just think it's, I think it's bad practice that the staff is supplying um, information to the board from April 30th when other people seem to know uh, what the June 30th uh, results are. So I guess I would ask Heather, what is the, uh, what's the status of those two loans as of June 30th? Others seem to know, but why, why can't the board know? Why can't we all know? Um, there, so there's a couple other things that were included in the financial reports. One were a bunch of bank statements from February through April. I noticed that those bank statements are addressed to 13060. So to my way of thinking, the district secretary could receive the bank statements and the district secretary could get them into agenda packets. It wouldn't take any, any time at all for Brian and Heather just to show the latest bank statements. And it's obvious that the May and June statements already came before this uh, agenda packet was even posted. So again, I don't understand why staff is providing uh, the board with uh, information that's two months out of date when the staff has the information that could have included the May and June bank statements. Um, and then the same thing goes for the bill list. If you look at the bill list, uh, somebody pushed a button on uh, June 17th uh, and produced a bill list with checks uh, up till April 30th. But that same staff member that ran the report could have uh, could have done it through May 31st on June 17th, or a staff member could have pushed a button this week and uh, given you the bill list all the way through June 30th. So I don't understand why why Brian and Heather are insisting on giving you stale information when it's clear that they know. They know um, June 30th figures, and Brian and Heather don't even need to produce these reports. It was a staff member who produced the bill list, and as I said, the district secretary can um, can include the bank statements. So it's not the issue isn't whether Brian and Heather have time. Uh, I think the issue really is whether they, uh, the board is being given the up to date information. And then on the minutes, um, item I says that May 2nd was corrected. I understand that uh, the vote on the proclamation has been added since it obviously did take place. So I appreciate that that change happened. But when the, the minutes for the May 2nd and May 21st meetings were presented last month to the board, I also commented on those minutes. Um, and my comments were ignored about the uh, reports out of closed session. So I guess I'm going to reiterate what I said last month. Um, after I heard the two reports, before I ever saw the minutes, um, after I heard the two reports, I was confused because the May 2nd report says that Brian's contract was extended by two months. And then the May 21st report out of closed session again says, was extended by two months. And so my question last month was, was it extended twice for two months twice? In other words, a total of four months, or is that really two months? And it's really unclear uh, by what's written in the minutes. Um, now, I guess I want to skip to June 27th. 
which was a purely a closed session meeting. And there's a report out of closed session in the June 27th meeting minutes. My understanding of the Brown Act is that certain reports out of closed session are required. For specific reports under certain situations, certain circumstances that are required to be made. The report on June 27th, it's not clear to me that, that there's a report that needs to be made there. It seems like I've, been to, I've seen many closed sessions, and the most usual result of a closed session is no reportable action. And it sounds like on June 27th, that's what happened. There was no reportable action. But I don't understand what's going on. Maybe there's a compulsion to try to say something about what happened in closed session. But when I go back to May 21st, it says the board has decided to extend the contract. Well, didn't that happen on May 2nd already? Um, why is it being reiterated on May 21st? It seems like a superfluous report. If the board took any action on May 21st, then the vote needs to be stated in the minutes, and there is no vote. So there is no vote. There was no action. If there was no action, there's probably no need for any reportable action on May 21st. So as far as I can tell, the May 21st meeting, the, the report on the closed session should be no reportable action, or it might be that the action would be or, or it might be that the, the report would be that Brian actually accepted the two-month extension that was offered after the May 2nd meeting. Um, now, back in May, when I was first confused by the, what happened in the meetings, I emailed Jeff, and uh, I thought Jeff clarified that what happened on May 2nd was that the board extended the two months, they extended an offer to extend the contract. And and yet, what I heard from Jeff was that Brian did not accept the, the extension until May 21st. So the, the board actually went into the meeting on May 21st, which was the expiration date of the original six month and one day contract. The board went into the meeting not knowing whether Brian would continue after that night. Um, and so maybe it, maybe there should be a report that Brian actually accepted the offer on May 21st. But the way that these um, reports are written in the minutes, it's very confusing. And um, I finally had another conversation with Jeff, I mean, another email conversation with Jeff today. And Jeff said that that actually what happened on May 2nd was that he was given total authorization to negotiate the interim contract, the final contract. No, I didn't say the final extend, contract. He could extend the interim contract for three, three, month, three uh, months. So to three months. Um, and so I heard today that Ryan's contract was extended by three months, and that's not reported anywhere in here. So what I think the May 2nd minutes should say is that the board authorized Jeff to continue negotiations and extend the interim contract yep. and negotiate the final contract, mm -hmm. the ultimate contract, which I guess is not going to happen. Um, but I don't think that the uh, I don't think the minutes on May second uh, clear, clearly say that. Jeff was appointed. Jeff was authorized as a committee of one to continue the negotiations. That ought to be that ought to be the action that was taken. That ought to be in the May second minutes. Um, so I think you should be careful with your reports out of closed session. I think you, actually you may be you may be saying things you don't need to say, like the June twenty seventh one. Probably ought to just say no reportable action. I think. And um, that's nine minutes, by the way. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Hey, Christina. Yes. 
Okay, so on the May 2nd and the May 21st meeting, I listened to the recording and just said the exact same thing both times. So that's what I put in the minutes. So I don't get information from the meeting afterwards. I'm not involved in closed session. So I'm just reporting out what I'm hearing. So I'll work with her to get this fixed. Okay. Yes. Yes, we 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 can work on the reporting out of closed session, but the but I will say that the minutes reflect what the report out is, not what the report out should be. So if if the minutes reflect what the report out is, they are not to be corrected. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, where are we? We need to vote on the three items that are remaining on the consent. Yes. Cured correct. The correct. I and J. G I and J. Okay. Do we have a motion? <clears throat> I'll motion that those items uh, be approved. Okay. I'll second. As written. I will second. G I and J, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Second. Okay. All right. Are you ready to take a vote? Yes. President Hill? Yes. Director Foltz? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Director Margate? Yes. All right. We have Mr. Castle. Thank you. And the remaining items on that, did we pull those? Yep. Okay. Is there any other business before the board tonight? Yeah, we, have to, well, we have to go through these. Yes. Oh. So Bob has questions. Yes. Would be the first one. Yep. Okay. Let me get to 10A. And most of these are just pretty quick questions, Chef. So. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> okay. I'm ready to go. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So in the quarterly status report on the Fall Creek Fish Ladder, it, it looked like there was going to be additional metal work. Is this change order covering uh, CCO 11? Is that the additional metal work that needs to be done? Or are we looking at another change order beyond this? No, this is the uh, change order for the metal. Okay, so this is like done, done. Yeah. Perfect. Great. Um, yeah, that's, that's my only question. Okay. okay. Um, um, I move that the board authorize the interim general manager to approve contract change order 11 for payment to Sibian Reed Construction Inc. for the Fall Creek Fish Ladder Rehabilitation Project in the sum of $12,630, increasing the not to exceed contract amount from $2,511,573 to Two million five hundred twenty-four thousand dollars, five hundred twenty-four thousand two hundred three dollars. Say that fast. Second. Okay. <clears throat> Have we already covered public comment? Public comment. Public comment on that issue. Board comments. Okay. No. okay. So we can go ahead and vote. President Hill. Yes. Director Fultz. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. Director Lucky. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. I think the next one was what, 10B? Yes, Alta Via change orders. Um, two questions, I think two questions, maybe three questions. Um, so you can only work six hours during the day. How many hours can they work at night? Is it longer? It was longer, yes. Okay. All right, so that like eight? Yes, they were allowed to work basically all night. All night, okay, yeah. great. Um, the culvert that's mentioned here um, as as needing as needing some rehabilitation, who, whose culvert was that? Is that our culvert or is that the county's culvert? And did we damage it? Which CCO are you referring to? Oops, one sec here. Oh, you know, I think my commenting got weirded out. Hang on. I think it was regarding, was it the CCO's 13? 
Is it a still play rental for the temporary bridge? No. Oh. I think what happens when I was doing commenting, it kept bouncing around for some reason, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly why. We'll ignore that one. Okay. Um, the retaining wall additional costs, CCO 18. This seemed like a fairly straightforward soldier pile wall. What, what, what happened? So in a geotechnical investigation, they do a boring and then they have data on that one location. So usually they'll do a boring on each end of the project site, maybe a third one in the center. And then they just do a linear interpolation between those points. So they always have in the geotechnical report that they need a representative from their firm at the site during construction to verify the conditions between those borings. And for our site, we had to go a little deeper. So the borings that were done at each end and in the middle actually didn't show that, I mean, all of them had to be deeper or just? I believe we only had two. We had one on each end. Okay. So we didn't have one in the middle. So everything in the middle needed to be deeper. And that accounted for the- It's basically you're at the discretion of the geotechnical engineer okay. in the field. So if they say you have to go a foot deeper, you got to go a foot deeper. Okay. Or you could you could say, no, we're going to take the risk. We're not going to go a foot deeper. But yeah, yeah. at that point, you kind of just want to follow it. Yeah, no, I'm, I got that. Yeah. So the CCO is approved to date, which is 23% of the original bid. Mm -hmm. Does that include the- Highway 9 work, or does that ex exclude the Highway 9 work? It says excluding CCO 8, but I wanted yes. to make sure that that, so that, is, we're 23%, actually now almost 30% over on this project. Okay. Yes. All right. And most of that's due to that retaining wall. That, the retaining wall is quite expensive. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I move that the board authorize the interim general manager to approve contract change orders 12, 13, 15, 17, and 18 for payment to Anderson Pacific Engineering Construction, Inc. for the Altavia pipeline replacement in the sum of $94,715.12, increasing the not to exceed contract amount from $2,693,646 to $2,693,646. $361. I'll second that. Do you have any public comments? Any public comments? No comments. Okay. <clears throat> President Hill? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Smalley? Yes. Director Largay? Yes. All right. Unanimously passes. <laughs> Item 10C. Lock long and feasibility study. It's okay to go? Yes. Okay. Um, what are the costs that the city of Santa Cruz is proposing for delivering treated water to San Lorenzo Valley Water District and raw water to San Lorenzo Valley Water District? So just to clarify, this is the selection of a consultant to make some of these determinations. It's not the specifics, we don't have them. That's why we're hiring the consultant. This, this is to choose an award, an agreement, or give an agreement, enter into agreement, excuse me, it's late, with a consultant. We had two consultants. We're picking one of them for us. Um, as far as the details about all this, there's it's a myriad of facts at this point, and that would come out when we do the study and we present the study. But this time, we're asking you to pick one of two consultants, or actually, we're asking you to pick Corolla as our recommended consultant. Um, did this go to bid? District, we do not, and government typically does not bid uh, consulting contracts. You ask for proposals and you rank the proposals based on a set criteria. Usually it's qualitative, primarily qualitative, and you're picking them based on their qualifications. How many How many people respond, companies responded? Two. Uh, was this the low? 
um, they were the lower cost. Um, I'm totally confused as to how we can make a determination of using the Loch Lomond allocation without knowing what our costs are going to be. I mean, so, sorry, I am going to pause and say again, President, please, we are asking you to decide about picking a consultant that's going to vet all this stuff. You're not asking about the details. The details will come out in the study. So, so staff isn't going to talk about details. Okay. Is it prepared to talk about details? So, so you can't talk about costs. Okay, we, we understand that. So during this engagement, part of their job will be to get these numbers from the city of Santa Cruz so that they can use them in their study. Correct. Given the city of Santa Cruz has studiously not provided those numbers in the past, do we have any indication that they will do so over the course of this engagement? Again, we're trying to pick a consultant who will direct the focus. If not, okay. Assuming that they continue to not provide those numbers, what will the consultant be delivering? What is their deliverable? Um, well, I think the, the contract in the contract and the proposal is in your package. Well, I don't know what their deliverable will be. Um, it's, an, it's an update to the 2010 feasibility analysis. Okay, so that feasibility analysis did not include any costs from the city of Santa Cruz. Therefore, we'll be spending a hundred grand to update a document whose costs are likely to be three X over what they are today, but we'll be no closer to being able to determine whether or not we should go with the treated water or the raw water option. Uh, that would be incorrect. I think we'll be closer. That's the point of the study. But if the city of Santa Cruz doesn't provide the number, we won't know that. Okay, so we're taking it out. But we don't know that either. <sighs> okay. I... Again, we're trying to pick the consultant here tonight. When does the when do we expect the work to start? As soon as we sign the agreement. And get them underway within staffing reason is reason of staffing limitations of the number. Okay, well, I mean, it makes no sense, but I had one other question. Uh, so the use of the Loch Lomond water is part, is in fact one of the major mitigation items in the Santa Margarita uh, Groundwater Agency um, <laughs> mitigations. What involvement, if any, do they have with respect to this activity and or funding of this activity? Funding of this, funding the district. We actually got a grant. This is actually grant funded, but I don't think it came through the Santa Margarita. No, not a word. Um, Santa Margarita. Sure, all, all of these are conversations, but again, and coming back to my point is we're picking the consultant. All of these are details that come out of the study. We're not asking you to decide any of that and take the scope and so forth. All yeah. of these, they're all, yes, these are all cogs in the machine. Okay. Santa Margarita or conjunctive use. Yes, this is all part of a big, this is one piece of a bigger picture. Okay. Um, given what's been presented, I, I can't make the motion. Okay. Um, I will make the motion then. Uh, but I have to go find it first. Uh, because I'm comfortable with what the staff has provided here. Um, thank you. Uh, 
Uh, I'll make the motion that the board directs the interim general manager to execute a professional services agreement with Carrillo Engineers uh, in an amount not to exceed 100000 and authorizes the interim general manager to execute non-substantive modifications as necessary. I'll second that. Comments from the public? Uh, we have one hand raised online. Uh, Cynthia. Good evening. Um, my question is, is there any alternate use for Loch Lomond water other than potable water? It appears to me that there are significant um, negatives to using Loch Lomond water for potable water. Can it be used to recharge the aqu aquifer in some passive way or used for irrigation or some other purpose other than drinking water? Thank you. Staff, take that one. Again, we're choosing a consultant tonight, and this is all uh, obviously this is information that would come out of the study. Um, Loch Lomond water certainly is, is requires treatment. Um, the district currently doesn't have the capability, so this is all part of the analysis of looking at that. Um, and if we do use that water, how much of it we use, we could blend it, treat it. This is all looking at the different costs of what we do with the water. But it is, yes, because of the algae. So it's all to be analyzed as part of the study. Okay. All right. I don't see any other public comment. Is there anybody else in the room? Nope, thank you. Okay. We're going to vote. President Hill? Yes. Director Fultz? No. Director Smalley? Yes. And Director Largate? Yes. All right. Motion passes. All right, I think we're on to item 10D. 10D, meter review fee. Um, Garrett, we're all going to take that one. Yeah, on the fiscal impact, um, I, I see that we're forecasting revenue to increase by 18,000. That There's likely to be some elasticity there given that we are charging where we weren't. Um, my understanding, though, is that this really is intended to just offset our costs so that yes. while revenue may go up by 18,000, it'll, it'll- The costs are already the, there. The costs are coming in and asking for, you know, coming in and asking about getting a meter put in and is it feasible and stuff like that. Okay, so there are no additional costs. We're basically just, it's an opportunity cost, but yes. no um, direct out-of-pocket costs to the district. It's just staff will do this versus that, right? Yeah, okay. And like I said, people are already coming in and saying, I want to build a house over here. Can I get a meter? And somebody has to go out and look at it. And yeah, I, I expect we'll get a lot less of those yeah. requests. So, I mean, and but the, all the neighboring districts all do this. Yeah. Okay. So, Excellent. some of them quite expensive, actually. Thank you. Um, I move that the board adopt the resolution approving the meter review fee. Okay. I'll second that. Comments from the public? Nothing online. Nope, I don't see anyone. All right, President Hill? Yes. Director Fultz? Yes. Director Smalling? Yes. Director Largate? Yes. All right, unanimously passes. And now we're on to 10E. Okay, delinquent water charges to be placed on the county. This is submitting the list of people with the delinquent charges to the county for collection through the property tax rule. Right, so um, the $181,000 more or less, that's what's being sent to the county out of the, if I go to the finance quarterly report, sorry, I gotta scroll down here since it's, where is it? Ah. 
uh, that will be the hundred eighty one thousand dollars then is going to be taken out of the uh, current six hundred and fifty two thousand nine hundred and ninety four as of april twenty four of which about three hundred is current, so that actually would be one hundred and eighty out of three hundred thousand. Is that my understanding? Is that correct? That is my understanding as well. What what is the reason we can't get all of it? Um, I, I, yeah, there we we have a certain policy on what we can send to the county, and these are the ones that actually meet that requirement. They have had the letters sent to them. I believe it's three letters over over a three month period, and they have to be so much delinquent over a certain amount before we can send it to the county. Okay, so I remember one of the things that we talked about when we instituted this policy was making sure we come back and look at it again, so that we don't have lots of cash situation where we're acting as a customer's bank effectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so this might be something that we might want to refine and tweak a little bit to make sure that um, we're collecting everything that we possibly can. It, so it, which may include making sure that we're sending the three letters out mm -hmm. to all the people, not just a subset of the people okay. in time right. to be able to make this um, allocation. Okay. What I can propose to do is bring back this I, the, the policy itself to the Budget and Finance Committee to have them review it and for consideration for changing the policy. Is that something that would please the board? With me. It's a fair amount of money we're leaving on the table so far. Yeah. The intent was over time, guys, to get up to almost 100%. Yes. Like you know, ninety high nineties. Yes. What what we don't know is how many of these people are then delinquent on their property taxes also. Well, that that's not our problem because I, I the county that. teeters us and we get the money. Yeah. <laughs> they get to pursue it. Yeah. Um, okay. And for the remaining charges, are we pursuing them through other means? Um, what other means that we have? We we no longer shut them off. Collection so, agency. Um, I I don't believe we actually are using a collection agency at this point. It's my understanding that we only rely on the county. So they're just getting their monthly bills showing the delinquent amounts. Okay, right. And I mean, I I don't think I have to tell you, but as soon as you send it to a collection agency, then we're we're losing a large percentage of that amount. It almost sounds like there's enough money here to have some clerical person who does nothing but ping these people the whole time. Well, I, I think these are things, as yeah. Heather quite like, rightly says, we probably need to it's hash out a committee. The BNF committee. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, okay. That's, Great. That's, that's yes. it. I think we should submit the list here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm getting there. Right. right. For the ones that I can support, I, I will do the, do the motion with your... Um, yes, please. Yeah. Okay. Um, I make a motion that the board adopt a resolution approving the delinquent water charges that shall be submitted to the County of Santa Cruz for collection on the property tax roll and authorize the interim general manager to enter into an indemnity agreement and to provide additional information as required by the county. Second. Any comments from the public? Seeing none. Any other comments from the board? Okay. Call a vote. President Hill. Yes. Director Foltz. Yes. Director Smalley. Yes. And Director Largi. Yes. All right. Passes unanimously. Okay. Now we're on to 10 F. Uh, yes, the budget amendment. Um, Heather, I, I know you've got a lot of numbers here, but I wasn't following what it is that we were trying to, to do. Okay. Um, and part of that was the abbreviated time period um, in which we got this. 
I am. Uh, it, it's I'm actually it's a very I'm, I'm going to call it a simple budget amendment. What I'm trying to do is actually bring the revenue up to agree with the um, rate study that was adopted so that the revenue um, agrees to that rate study. If the petition was to pass, I would be bringing back another amendment to reduce that revenue projection. And then the other item that I am also trying to bring to our most current estimates is the FEMA reimbursements. And so um, at, in the, at the June meeting during the, finance, the debt financing item, I brought to the board the information about the revised estimates of the amount of FEMA that we'll be receiving. And so I am adjusting that accordingly. So it really is just those two items, the FEMA estimate revenue, as well as the, um, the, the rate revenue based on the, the adopted rate study. Okay, and the adjustments for the revenue part are for both the remaining fiscal year 2024 and fiscal year 2025. Um, I am only adjusting fiscal year 24, 25 at this point, since it is July and we are in 24, 25. Okay. So I, I was not going to go back and do 23, 24 at this point. It's about okay. going forward. Okay. And then the FEMA adjustment, is that on a capital budget, not on the operating budget, correct? It, correct. It's in the capital budget, but it's the overall adopted budget by the board. Yes. Yeah, I mean, again, capital operating is usually counted separately, right? Okay. Um, yes, it's under the capital. I guess I look at it as as important to keep that information accurate so that when cash projections are done, that good information is used and not old information when we have good new, new better information. Yeah, absolutely agree and makes perfect sense. Um, I'll move that the board adopt a resolution approving an amendment to the fiscal year 2024-25 budget. I'll second that. Comments from the public? Um, any other comments from the board? Last minute comments? Nope. Okay. Call a vote. President Hill. Yes. Director Fultz. Yes. Director Smiley. Yes. Okay. And now we're on to 10H. Quarterly status report. Okay. And on this one, I'm going to have to scroll through. I don't know if anybody else has any other questions, but I'm going to scroll through them. Mark, did you have anything? No. no. Go ahead, Bob. No. We answered one of them about aromas versus, versus Felton earlier today. Good news. Yes. Good news. Um, uh, the Brookside Drive Felton Pipeline Project, just to refresh me, is that the one that the road had slipped out in the, in the big storm and they were here that one time asking yes. us to accelerate uh, yes. things? So we were able to accommodate them. We completed the design with district staff. Um, we have district staff doing the construction currently. That's fantastic. Good, agree. good work. That is great. Thank you. Yes. That's, we anticipated that was going to take a lot longer. Yeah. I mean, well, they haven't done any of the paving yet either. So we don't have to pave. We're oh, going to put our pipe in the ground and they're going to pave. Perfect. Yeah. Oh, marvelous. Yeah. Because we don't want to tear up their brand new paving once yes. they And we don't want to spend the money on the asphalt either. district staff, we're probably going to be half of what it would have cost to hire like a yeah. construction firm. Yeah, no, that's great. That's great. Great yeah. work. Good. Um, so for interests of full disclosure, I've mentioned this before. I live across from the Highland Tank, and I was very interested to see what happened over the last couple of days. So we are removing tanks, it looks like. Do we have confirmation that all those sites are ready for the bigger 120,000 gallon tank? So at that site, they've we've set up some temporary tanks. Operations is taking down the redwood tank. We need to do a geotechnical report. I would anticipate the geotechnical report will have conditions that will allow us to build a large tank there. Is there a reason that we took down the tank before we did the geotech to make that confirmation? It's not clear to me what operations intends to do with the tank that is disassembled, if that is going to be used to repair other old and wooden tanks, or I, I'm not um, privy to that. 
Well, I just it, it looks to me like this is a broader thing, and I'm not I don't want to focus just on the tank across from me. Okay. Why would we remove the tanks before we had the geotech confirmation that we were ready to put a bigger tank in? Because right now, if there's any issue with the tanks, we're then left with the, the smaller polys that are left. Right. So we're operating off the smaller polys. I believe Highland Tank was leaking very bad out of the bottom. There was a small yeah, creek yeah, it was. Brook or yeah. drainage swell that was wet all the time. Are we... Are we tearing down any other tanks besides Island Tank? I know that we took one of the Echo tanks out of commission because it was leaking very bad. Um, other than that, I'm not aware of any other tanks that have been taken out of commission. Okay. All right, well, that answered that then. Um, just as a note, um, once the Peavine raw water pipeline is... I guess mitigated with the removal of the hazardous trees. I I would like to walk that route. Like that, I asked for that over a year ago. It was put on hold pending the mitigation. Um, the 2023 tank rehabilitations it says work is on hold. Staff is considering a design build contract for repairs to Brookdale and Blair tanks. What does that mean? So when I was hired by the district, there was a draft RFP um, for applying a epoxy finish on the insides of the tanks, removing rust and putting a new epoxy finish on the inside. But basically to repair the tank. Yeah, the coating, the just the coating. The coating, okay. Yes, and it will stop for deterioration. Uh, I reviewed some reports. It looked like we sent some divers in and they did some epoxy patches over some really bad spots. But it's my understanding what we're going to do is drain the tanks, sandblast, and then they'll go in and coat the whole thing. Okay. And it'll be essentially like a new tank. Okay. So I've talked about this before. Most of our tanks are well outside of their maintenance. So it sounds to me like this is what I was fearing, which is we have to do a lot more work to bring them back up to a particular level before we can do the recoding. That is, we have to repair them um, due, due to the deterioration. Yeah, so it's my understanding we are going to do sandblasting and then a new coating on the inside. Yeah, well, you, you'd probably want to sandblast anyway. Uh, I can speak more to that. This is James Furtado, Director of Operations. I well, might thanks, but nobody recognized me. Um, so this is just normal. It'll be the same thing as regular paintings and coatings. It has been, de de been deferred for a long time. As well, you know, Bob, you've been a part of this for a long time. And you are correct. And it has been deferred again due to funding. Uh, we were working on it diligently. Me, Joshua, Rick Rogers. Um, one of the projects pulled due to funding to okay. supply funding to other projects. Okay, James, thank you for that clarification. Um, on the GIS system updates, uh, the mapping continues here to um, identify the meter locations. Will this help us identify who is on which line so that we can do a better job notifying of outages? Yes, there was a lot of Facebook chatter over the last month about this topic, particularly in Boulder Creek. Yes. Excellent. Uh, next step would be get a CRM and integrate with our phone system to automate the calls out. But, you know, that's a that's or a even automated emails. Be or even automated email, if they're if they are agreeing to it. OK, um, that was all for the um, engineering. Thanks, Garrett. Appreciate it. No problem. Um, on the environmental, the roof replacement for the uh, $305,000 for nine pump house structure hardening projects, is the roof replacement all that is needed to harden them? That is, they're already concrete or concrete block and Correct. just need a new roof? Yes, sir. That's great. Um, do we expect the HCP to be finished in December of 2024 with Carly's departure? 
I can't answer that right now. I, I wouldn't know if we're looking to get a replace at the moment. Okay. Um, on the finance report, on the past dues, there are 99 active liens with the county totaling $45,012. I, I wasn't sure what that was. Those are probably um, liens that were sent to the county in prior years that are still oh. active and haven't been paid. Oh, I see. Because the property hasn't transferred yet. Um, Correct. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay, great. Yeah. At least it's earning interest. Um, on the uh, on the report, Heather, on page three fifty six, the rate stabilization. Um, I would agree with Bruce. Um, that was specifically around the twenty seventeen rate increase, uh, where they had a drought. The possibility of adding a drought surcharge uh, that's that's no longer part of our. It's not part of our current plan. Not part of our current rates rate structure, correct. I, I agree. Thank you. Sorry, I got to get through a lot of stuff to see if there's anything I had in operations. It looks like all our wells are doing well. No, uh -huh. pun, inten no pun intended. Um, Looks like we're meeting our Fall Creek bypass so far. So that's all good. And James, on the um, the strong surface water still in May, how, how did we do in June and, and is it falling off here in July? Uh, we're still pretty strong due to the fact that we are utilizing Fall Creek and using IT6 pump water north. So we're doing pretty well with uh, high capacity CFS at Fall Creek. Um, and Foreman is still um, pumping, treating water through line treatment plant at uh, about 400 plus gallons a minute. That's really great. I mean, two years of good rain. Mm -hmm. um, big, big difference. Yeah, big difference. We should get it. It's been huge on the wells, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. And that's why the wells are doing well um okay thanks james i appreciate it yes, sir. Uh, is that the last one yes that's it okay what else do we have here district reports going through every discuss those anybody else have any comments on district yeah. reports Oh. Written communications, there was a letter to the board from Deborah Lowen, which was attached to your packets. Informational material, none. Uh, well, um, wait, wait a sec, I did have something, a yeah. question on the um, on the um, records request. Has uh, Ms. Lowen's question been answered? Has she been provided the information? As far as I know, she was... She was answered the first time, first go around. Yes, yeah, ask the question. Well, the letter's dated July 10th, and she's said the information she received was not an actual expense occurred. So we answered, we answered her question the first time around. She's just insisting that maybe we're not exactly correct in her answer. That as far as I know, we are correct. So, so the district has already spent forty thousand dollars. No, no, that's the that's the misunderstanding. I see. We said that the estimated cost of legal fees would be around forty thousand dollars, but and not that it's been spent. It, not that it's been spent, and she is unclear about what was actually said. It's in the tape, and that's the end of that. Yeah, she has received a written okay. response. Excellent. Okay, great. Thank you. 
There is a public comment on this. I'm sorry, what? There is a public comment on that item. I don't need to recognize. Why not? Christina, excuse me, is Christina still on the line? Hi, Christina, could you please answer this? Um, is there public comment on discussion about a correspondence with the district? Yes, there's public comment on everything you agendize. So please make your comment. Um, so what... What I heard at the meeting was that Brian sent, said that $40,000 had been spent. That's what's on the table. Um, and so Deb was simply trying to uh, do a records request and, and see the bills. And then when she did it, she was told, oh, there was no such expense. So there's a conflict between what he actually said in the meeting I mean, what he said in the meeting was false. I guess that's that's the conclusion here. Uh, there was braggadocio of some some sort of baseless, a baseless. Uh, Can you play back the tape? Exactly what I said. Uh, give me a minute. I mean, I, I guess I'm not be able to find it. I don't know what what how many minutes it was, but um, I was at the meeting, and I think maybe we should maybe we should devote a few minutes to. At a so meeting. perhaps at a future meeting, perhaps at a future meeting, yes. She did receive a written response. Um, the, the issue isn't about whether she got a response or not. Yes. The issue is what exactly was the claim that was made in open session? Mm -hmm. Sometimes people misspeak. Miss okay, I believe we are done. Any further business before the board? We are adjourned. Thank you, Evie.